Good evening. It's six o'clock in the evening on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. This is the regular meeting of the Coleraine Township Board of Trustees. Mr. Baker, would you please call the attendance roll? Mr. Roger Ball? Here. Mr. Unger? Here. Mr. Waller? Here. Uh, Mr. Mills? Is there evening, um, the Mike? Good evening. I recommend that the board go into executive session in accordance with the higher revised code, section 121.22G1, to discuss the employment and compensation of public employees. Uh, and also in accordance with the higher revised code, section 121.22G2, to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. Also in accordance with the higher revised code, section 121.22G3, to discuss pending or eminent litigation with the township attorney. Also in accordance with the higher revised code, section 121.22G4, to discuss collective bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation. And also uh, in accordance with the higher revised code, section 121.22G8, to consider confidential information related, relating to specific business strategy and to discuss negotiations with other political subdivisions respecting requests for economic development assistance. I would motion we go into executive session for such things. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? None. Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Raj Gabal. Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Uh, the board will, will go into executive session and we should be back on time to begin the meeting at 7 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock in the evening on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. And the um, board has returned from executive session. Mr. Baker, would you please call the attendance roll? Mr. Raj Gopal? Here. Mr. Unger? Here. Mr. Waller? Here. Mr. Mills, um, do you have anything on executive session? There's nothing to report. Thank you, Mr. Mills. I'd ask that you uh, all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that you remain standing for a moment of meditation. And as I've said in previous meetings, there is a lot of stuff going on nowadays. And I don't know if it's any more than any time in the past. It's just we seem to hear a lot more about it. And I'd ask that everyone would, would keep our nation in your prayers. Uh, as Washington said at Valley Forge, tomorrow will be a better day. And, and things do tend to get better. And, and uh, so please keep our, our great country in, in your prayers. Amen. Thank you. And the next item is the fiscal officer for the for the approval of minutes. Thank you, board. I have two sets of minutes uh, for this evening. First, I would like to ask the board to approve the meeting of the special uh, meeting on September the 8th. I would motion that we approve the minutes of the special meeting on September 8th. I second it. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? None. None. Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Raj Gopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Thank you. And then I would also ask the board to approve the minutes of the regular meeting also on September 8th, 2020. I motion that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting from September 8th, 2020. I second it. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, Jeff, there was a couple spots in there where the words, there was a mis missing space between the words. There's no change in the words, it's just the, the spacing was a little off. I uh, trust you've corrected those or in the process thereof. Uh, is there any other discussion? None. Nope, none. Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Roger Paul? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Wallet? Aye. Uh, the next, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, the next item is the uh, presentation, Mr. Mills. Yes, sir. Uh, we begin our presentations this evening with a, uh, a special presentation, um, a presentation of a retirement proclamation to uh, now retired Chief Frank Cook. Chief Walls. Good evening. 
Uh, it gives me great pleasure, and it's a, a huge privilege and truly humbling to stand here and be able to recognize uh, my predecessor, retired Chief Frank Cook. And uh, as I look back over my career here at Corain Township, um, Chief Cook has been a friend, he's been a confidant, he's been a mentor, uh, he's been a coach, he's been a leader, and he's just been a great human being. And um, it seems odd not coming in the building at 4160 and uh, hearing him come in the side door and watching him park in the same uh, parking spot uh, as he oftentimes did and uh, having those conversations early in the morning that we did. But, you know, to, to have the opportunity to stand here and, and recognize him, you know, for me is truly um, a, a privilege. And so with that, I had, had a quick message here that I'd like to read from retired Chief Bruce Smith. Um, I had asked uh, retired Chief Smith to be here this evening but uh, he had surgery this afternoon to remove a kidney stone. And he says, please apologize to Frank for me that I wasn't able to attend. It would have been difficult for me to fairly summarize what Frank has done for the organization, the community, and for me personally. I'll catch up with you at a later date. And so on behalf of myself, uh, the organization, uh, Chief Smith, and the community, I have a proclamation here for uh, the trustees to read. I was going to ask Raj to read that into the record, please. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> Chief, it, has been, it is a very, very privilege for me to read the proclamation for you. And uh, <laughs> I, got, I got emotional. Sorry about that. I, uh, the time I started the trustee job, I had a great admiration for outstanding service for our township. And when I look at all the people standing there, your staff, look at them, how much you mentor those people. You know, you mentor them. You also mentor me. I look at you as my great mentor. And you brought me a lot of inspiration in my role as a trustee. It is my great privilege to read this proclamation. <clears throat> Colerain, whereas the proclamation for Chief of Department Frank W. Cook for his years of dedicated service to Colerain Township, Ohio. Whereas Chief of Department Frank W. Cook was hired on October 6 of 1984 as an employee of the Colerain Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Service. And <clears throat> whereas Chief of Department Frank W. Cook has demonstrated professionalism, allegiance, service, commitment, and excellent through his contribution as a firefighter, emergency medical technician, lieutenant, captain, battalion chief, assistant chief, chief of department, leader, mentor, and friend during his tenure with the department. Whereas chief of department Frank W. Cook retired on September 5th after nearly 36 years of commendable dedication to providing fire protection, emergency medical, and community risk reduction services to the Colerain Township community. Therefore, be it resolved that the Colerain Township Board of Trustees recognizes Chief of Department Frank W. Cook as an outstanding employee and that he contributed greatly to our community 
during his long tenure of public service. Be it further resolved that in recognition of all that Chief of Department Frank W. Cook has done for Colerain Township, the Colerain Township Board of Trustees hereby proclaim Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020 as a special day of recognition for Frank W. Cook to acknowledge his contributions to our community and wish him continued success in retirement. I'm, I would go ahead and motion that we approve the proclamation. I will second. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? This uh, congratulations, Frank. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, and thank you so much for your service, and enjoy uh, retirement. And I also want to thank you, all the family, your wife, be with you all these years when you work night and day, you know, protecting our people. And was there any other discussion? Sir. Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Rajgopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Wallet? Aye. Did you have any comments, Frank, for your very last trip ever to the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I do, and I thank you for the recognition this evening and the opportunity to speak. Uh, you know, it feels a little strange being on this side of uh, receiving the recognition. I mean, for many years, I've given a lot of recognition to our staff and uh, so it just seems a little peculiar to uh, to be on this side of the recognition but uh, all seriousness um, just a few words I'd like to say um, you know, I know I've already said this will probably be my last time standing up here at this podium and I've been here <laughs> twice so <laughs> but you're uh, always welcome back Frank well, thank you I appreciate that uh, but having the opportunity to serve as Colerain Township's fire chief has truly been an honor of a lifetime. Of my nearly 36 years as a firefighter in this community, 31 of those years have served <coughs> in a leadership capacity. Being a leader is all about other people, the firefighters and the staff who serve beside me and the citizens who depend upon this department to provide the protective services to ensure their quality of life. Many people look at the firefighting profession as a physically and mentally demanding occupation. But a demand that most don't realize is the demand that is placed on one's family. I dedicated a great deal of time to this department in this community. My education and training in the fire service profession. It's certainly with certainty that my family can attest to this fact. My wife, Patty, my ch children, Danielle and Aaron, have been by my side the whole way in support of me, and I'm internally grateful to them. In terms of my legacy, I've had such a memorable and amazing career serving this community in the fire service profession. I'd like to think that I've blazed an unprecedented trail of highly respected work ethic, unsurpassed integrity, and excellent leadership. I hope that my accomplishments throughout my career has and will continue to inspire others to follow my path. It is with deepest appreciation that I thank each of you, Chief Walls, for this evening's recognition. It's with even greater in deeper gratitude that I thank my family, present and past co-workers, the township's administration and elected officials, and the employees and citizens of Colerain Township for their support of me and our superior fire department in now and in the future. And again, thank you for this evening's recognition. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Frank. Uh, State Representative Abrams has something for you, I believe. Thank you. 
All right, Chief. One more thing, right? <laughs> this is an accommodation on behalf of the Ohio House of Representatives, so I'm going to read this to you because retirement is definitely a special milestone in your life, and you certainly deserve every moment of this recognition. On behalf of the members of the Ohio House of Representatives of the 133rd General Assembly of Ohio, we are pleased to offer our most sincere congratulations to Chief Frank Cook on your retirement from the Coleraine Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services. Throughout your distinguished career as a firefighter, you have demonstrated an unwavering dedication to professional excellence and have performed your various duties with integrity, discretion, and the utmost competence. You have been tireless in your efforts to ensure the safety of the community's citizens, and you have been conscientious and fair as the chief of the Coleraine Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services. With commitment and initiative, you have guaranteed a high level of success for all projects with which you have been involved over the years, and you have become an impressive role model for all of those pursuing a career as a first responder. As you retire, you have the satisfaction of knowing that you have provided a vital service to the state of Ohio and that your endeavors will stand as the hallmark of good citizenship. Your skills, confident, confidence, and stellar contributions to Coleraine Township will certainly be missed by all of those who have had the honor of working with you. Thus, with great pleasure, we pay tribute to you on your retirement and salute you as a fine Ohioan. I think we need a copy of it before he. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Frank, Raj has these proclamations for you, although I think we will need a photocopy of them before you leave with them, so just for our records. Frank, we know where you live. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I may be a little hard to find. But <laughs> <laughs> I can find it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeff, could you turn the heat down? Thank you. Are there, look at, can I grab a picture? Okay. No. Oh. I don't know over there. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you, State Representative Abrams. Thank you. And our next item on the agenda will be the swearing in of Assistant Fire Chief Grant Burns, and we will ask our, our Fire Chief uh, to take over the uh, podium. And that next person is coming in. Your maiden voyage is Chief, right? You know, it's, um, it's, it's really humbling to recognize Chief Cook for his years of service, but then to also swear in um, Chief Burns and Lieutenant Becker. And little do they know, I'm going to hold them to it. There you go. <laughs> Good evening. Howdy. And so real quick, uh, let's talk about Assistant Chief Burns. For those who don't know, uh, in this uh, chamber at 4 p.m., Assistant Chief Burns was recognized by the state of Ohio as the 2020 Ohio Fire Officer of the Year. And so that is a huge, huge honor um, bestowed upon uh, Chief Burns as the 2020 Ohio Fire Officer of the Year. And, and so for those that don't know, if you look at this organization within its history, um, we've had Corky Snyder, who was in the Fire Service Hall of Fame, Bruce Smith, who was in the Fire Service Hall of Fame, 
Paul Riedel, who was in the Fire Service Hall of Fame, Bob Relig, who was in the Fire Service Hall of Fame, and now Grant Burns, who was in the Fire Service Hall of Fame. There is no organization in the state of Ohio who has been honored that many times, and, and it shows the caliber of the persons that work in this organization. And, and let me say about um, Chief Burns. He and a retired Chief Cook were in the same recruit class together and hired on the same day, 6 October 1984. And so to recognize Chief Cook tonight and now swear in Chief Burns uh, is, is truly, once again, um, a humbling and, and a huge privilege. Uh, Chief Burns um, is, I don't even know what words to say sometimes. If you've ever had the pleasure of listening to Chief Burns on the radio at, at a fire scene, as cool, as calm, as collected, as uh, skilled as a person as you could ever imagine running an emergency incident, and I would put him up against anybody in the United States of America running an incident. And so to, to be able to swear him then as the Assistant Chief of Operations um, uh, allows me to have both he and Will Mueller uh, in and close to me and to be their servant and, and their chief is really um, an honor greater than I can ever imagine. And so I look forward to what we accomplish with Chief Burns in charge of operations, and I know that we're going to do great things. And so, why we're really here then? I did a terrible job at this uh, two weeks ago. So. I, say your name. Uh, Grant Burns. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And its bylaws. And its bylaws. I will abide by the Corrin Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services mission statement. I will abide by the Corrin Township Fire Department EMS mission statement. Values. Values. Code of ethics. Code of ethics. Standard operating guidelines. Standard operating guidelines guidelines and the township's policies and procedures. Township's policies and procedures. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of assistant fire chief. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of fire assistant chief. And in Fort Corning Township, in Fort Corning Township, Hamlin County, Hamlin County, State of Ohio, State of Ohio, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me go. So help me go. Congratulations. Congratulations, and the next item will be the swearing in of Lieutenant Scott Becker. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Good to see kids so involved politically at such a young age. We <laughs> try. <laughs> uh, and so it gives, gives me great privilege then uh, once again to swear in tonight uh, Lieutenant Scott Becker. And so Scott started here in 8 October of 2002. Um, to a certain degree, at times I felt like Scott was uh, a bit of a stepchild, a good one. Um, and we've been through any number of things together over the course of his career. Um, some good and not, some not so good. Uh, and probably some things that we wish that we were never a part of. But Scott has always performed admirably and it gives me great pleasure to see him rise to the rank of a lieutenant. And so Scott is one of those people who has always been a barrier breaker and will continue to be one. 
and I don't expect that he will stop at the rank of lieutenant. And so uh, it gives me great privilege once again to swear in the first lieutenant under my tenure, that being Lieutenant Becker. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Amazing pictures. <laughs> Your youngest needs to come out of her shell a little bit more. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, Lieutenant Becker. Congratulations. If you want to Lieutenant. take a second and introduce your family? Looks like you have a few of them with you. This is my wife, Julie. Hi, Hi Julie. Well, what a marvelous day in your in your family history! Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hey, Thank you. Family. You have a beautiful family. It's uh, it's it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. <laughs> bye, bye bye, bye sweetheart. Bye. Come back and see us. <laughs> this is cute. Bye. <laughs> A lot of little kids running around this township, Mr. Mills. And our next item will be a presentation by the Colerain Chamber of Commerce president. And I'll let Mr. Mills introduce him. Sure. Um, Dave Moravik has uh, joined our community in, um, uh, in, wow, right around the end of February, beginning of March. And he relocated here from Illinois and... Um, uh, started his career in Colerain Township at one of the most inopportune times that one can imagine, uh, right at the beginning of COVID. This is a, a job that requires a great deal of uh, reaching out to, to the business community and building uh, relationships. Um, and that is very difficult to do during a pandemic, but uh, somehow uh, Mr. Moravik has, has done that. And um, we are excited to to host him this evening and um, hear about his vision for the uh, Coleraine Township Chamber of Commerce. Perfect timing. Dave, the floor is yours. Good evening, sir. Hi, Dave. And if, if you want to, you can uh, pull your mask down. Uh, the audio will pick up a lot better. <laughs> Thank you. I will do so. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, it's nice to meet all of you uh, in a professional uh, forum like this. It's my first time to a board meeting. I've gotten to uh, see your work online, but uh, first time here, so thanks for having me. You've got the benefit of uh, the PowerPoint ahead of time, so I'm going to save you the uh, uh, board, boredom of me reading. Um, but if you have questions along the way, um, certainly be glad to answer them. I've been in the community now for about eight months, and uh, people have been extremely welcoming. Um, my background is uh, 
uh, presented there and uh, most of, I think, what um, drew me to the Chamber of Commerce from a, from a hiring perspective was my experience as a leader. Um, I've owned and managed businesses most of my career and um, as a CEO president, that's the title that I was looking for when I uh, applied for the position and uh, David Denny and the, the, the group at the chamber were extremely um, interested in that background and I've always been involved in chambers of commerce. So um, any questions about my background? Yeah, I got one thing, Dave. After the next presentation, would you come and do some stand-up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> As it does indicate in here for those watching at home, he's an amateur stand-up comic, but, but sadly we have a lot of those that, that show up at our meetings and so there's a long line of, uh, of folks that want to uh, take your spot. What's funny about that is that in open mic situations in comedy clubs, you get five minutes. And uh, very similar to public forum, I guess you could, I could take my five minutes and uh, tell a couple of jokes, but. I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> we need that here. We need a little levity. Is, is our green room what Jay Leno's? Uh, no, Jane Leno's <laughs> green room is much smaller. <laughs> <laughs> much, much smaller. Um, and I wasn't on for that. I have a bar trick where I catch coins off of my elbow. And they flew me to California to catch uh, coins off of my elbow. And at some, at some point, um, with a couple of drinks, I, I, I will have a question for you. If, if someone was interested in joining the chamber, how would they go about doing that? Um, easy enough. On our uh, website in the upper right hand corner, there's a join now button. Um, most of the time I've been talking about the Chamber of Commerce as a boutique Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's the Cincinnati USA Chamber, which has thousands of members. And then there are Chambers of Commerce like North uh, College Hill that have 40 or 50 members and um, through a volunteer staff. So we're kind of in between, and most members come to us because of a specific reason. Um, either they're taking advantage of the healthcare benefits or workman's comp benefits or something else uh, benefit-wise that they, uh, their small business wouldn't have advantage to. Uh, much larger businesses like Rumpke or Clippard have access to those, but uh, smaller businesses don't have access to that. So um, easy enough to uh, join, cost is $295 to $650 uh, annually, depending on what the, um, uh, what the number of employees in the organization is. Great. Yeah. And um, it uh, looks like a, a great presentation. If anyone wants to, to see it, it is on our website on the agenda. Yeah. Do you want to walk through that? Um, you want to give some world view if did, you like to? Did you want to go through the, you can go through yeah. uh, the, just I'm going to highlight a couple yeah. things within each okay. of the slides. I don't want to uh, read them specifically, but um, among the things that I wanted to talk about with this particular slide is that the Chamber of Commerce is only six years old, and I'm the first full-time employee of the organization. Um, Deb Stonehill, my predecessor, had uh, been a part-time staff. I have a part-time admin. And so this is a step up for the organization to have full-time resource. My hope is to build the Chamber of Commerce to uh, three, four, five hundred members uh, across the community in a relatively short amount of time. I'm a believer that many hands make light work and uh, the opportunity to serve those businesses that wouldn't otherwise uh, have participated in the Chamber of Commerce will have that opportunity over the next couple of years. And in doing so, um, I believe that the, my staff will grow and that uh, we, in conjunction with the, the community, the township, the non-for-profits, and uh, the businesses across the community are gonna benefit from that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. Take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. This is my other half. This is Patty. Uh, we moved here from Illinois. And uh, welcome to the community, Patty. <laughs> yeah. Patty. Yes. Great. We're glad you're here. We were here for the uh, for the ribbon cutting ceremony out at the dog park this afternoon, and uh, we, as a chamber of commerce, uh, and we'll see in a, a couple of slides. Um, uh, believe in supporting the community and celebrating within the community. 
the uh, next slide is really about, uh, and I think uh, uh, Raj made mention of, of seeing this slide, but I've used this slide in presentations over the years and it really makes sense today. Um, if I thought that I was coming in as Chamber of Commerce president on February 10th, pre-COVID, I thought that my job would have looked like that straight line. Uh, but I knew better, because uh, I've been in challenged organizations and challenging situations, and this really is what it looks like. You had to shift, you had to uh, do what you guys did to be able to uh, hold your public meetings on Zoom, um, to be able to do what you've done social distancing wise for the uh, individuals to celebrate tonight. Um, it's not exactly what you thought it would be, right? Well, I certainly didn't think that this uh, straight line was gonna be exactly this way, but um, we're not sure where we're at in that squiggle, right? We're somewhere in the middle, but we don't know exactly where. We don't know when we're gonna come out of the COVID situation, but if you go into it with the right approach, if you go into it with the right attitude, um, those challenges that come along the way, that, that curve in the road or that fork in the road, um, you'll generally make a good decision. So uh, my experience has been with uh, challenged organizations. I uh, was with two companies that lost multi-million dollars over multiple years and involved in those turnaround businesses. So I hope as I can give back to some businesses locally that are challenged from a fiscal perspective and, and staffing perspective. So I thought it was important to throw that slide in there. Um, with regard to um, uh, my initial approach, the last bullet point is really the most important one. Many of my counterparts in um, uh, chamber leadership across the state and even across the country have been in their roles for five, 10, 20 years. And uh, they've done the same things. Their board of directors has um, uh, uh, given them carte blanche, if you will, to just stay the course, just do what you've been doing. And most of them have, have taken their foot off the gas, so to speak. Um, they're not gonna get fired after their 20th year or 10th year uh, because of COVID, right? Um, however, me coming in to this particular position, I didn't wanna have to ask myself, uh, when do I jumpstart this? Uh, six months from now, a year from now? And so the counsel that I got from marketing folks and from uh, others that I respect uh, was to hit the gas and don't wait. Don't wait for COVID to end. Don't wait for um, this particular event or this uh, epiphany to come down, but to hit the accelerator from the very beginning. And that's exactly what I've done. And, and I believe that that's been a good thing for the community. And I believe it's a good thing for, for businesses across the community. So if you have any questions about uh, any of uh, this particular slide, um, uh, uh, Jeff and Jeff were instrumental in um, <coughs> my uh, uh, getting started. Jeff took a couple of hours and drove me around the community. Actually, I think I drove. Yeah, you did. Um, yep. And so that I could feel comfortable in the community. Um, in fact, I was on John Rose this, after, uh, this morning, and I remember the morning that you were telling me the story about <laughs> the, the, uh, the changes that took place on John Rose, and, <coughs> and um, you know, very cool to, uh, to revisit that. Um, I'm not gonna go through the mission uh, of our Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you can certainly read it. We've uh, modified it just slightly uh, to include the greater coal rain region because uh, there are businesses that are part of our Chamber of Commerce that are in Harrison or in Springfield or Green Township. Uh, we've got members uh, as far north as Lebanon in the Miami Valley Gaming uh, who are Chamber members because their human resource director uh, is uh, coal rain based. And so it's important for us to recognize that businesses outside of the, the township borders um, you know, can, can participate and, and take advantage of, you know, of the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, this is really an important slide. And if we spent um, the next hour talking about this, <laughs> uh, I'd probably bore you to tears, but in, uh, I don't wanna do that. Um, this has just come up as part of our strategic planning to uh, keep it simple as far as our um, Chamber of Commerce is concerned. At the bottom is support. We're supporting businesses and we're supporting the community. Uh, support is foundational to what it is that we do. 
on the right side is celebrate and on the left side is connect. If we're not celebrating the opening of a, of a dog park or we're not connecting people uh, one to another or business to uh, business or community member to, uh, per, to help with a particular challenge, then we're not serving the community. And I've uh, been a servant leader in most of the positions that I've been involved with and believe that this is really a good um, uh, keep it simple KIS approach to the Chamber of Commerce. And so um, we're gonna have some graphics around this uh, triangle coming out. Um, uh, hopefully we'll have some marketing help because I'm not very good at, <laughs> good at graphic design. But um, any questions about that, that approach? Um, we went through a SWOT analysis in our uh, first leadership um, uh, strategic planning meeting two months ago, Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff and Jeff obviously sit on our board as advisors, as does the uh, uh, representative from Northwest Schools. And I brought forward these uh, strengths and opportunities. We can get into uh, any one of the six of them if you want to. Uh, just briefly, the uh, board that we have, the, the people involved are tremendous. Um, my, my board is uh, foundational here in uh, Colerain. They're lifers uh, here in the community and uh, they want the business community to succeed. We do have financial stability, which is a blessing that many of my counterparts and other chambers of commerce don't have. They're living month to month. Uh, we happen to have um, a, a good financial position and that will allow us to do some things that uh, we wouldn't otherwise have done. And we, I believe, have community support. I think that uh, in reaching out to uh, the folks at that uh, Greater Northbrook and, uh, and other um, uh, places across the community, they're recognizing the importance of the Chamber of Commerce and bringing these connections together. From an opportunity standpoint, I mentioned the boutique approach. Um, the business roundtables, we've started uh, small groups uh, and the collaboration of people that have uh, 10, 20, 30 years or more of experience uh, lends itself to that, to that approach. And we do have about 100 members that took the chamber for a test drive over the last five years, uh, but said, no, we're going to uh, withdraw our membership. And so there's a concerted effort on my part to uh, reinvigorate that, that uh, membership and to bring them back to, um, you know, back to uh, the chamber. I believe that that will be successful in the long run because we've provided the programming and the foundational support for those businesses. And um, uh, there's about a thousand member uh, businesses across the community that um, still don't know about the Chamber of Commerce. Um, for those who don't know, we have a Hometown Heroes event on Thursday. Um, we have tremendous uh, support for that event. Uh, we're gonna be recognizing uh, many of the people that have come through the uh, doors this evening in uh, the fire and police leadership as well as two uh, World War II veterans, one from the Navy and one from the Army, one that uh, was on the USS Otter uh, battleship in, in uh, World War II and the other uh, Army uh, individual was in the Signal Corps. Uh, Signal Corps goes back to communications and uh, multi-service um, uh, communications across the armed forces, and my son is in the Signal Corps. Um, he's stationed currently in uh, Northern Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, so it kind of tugs at my heart that we're gonna be able to recognize those individuals across the community. Um, this comment I threw up there uh, specifically because Jeff and I have had a chance to talk about it. If you haven't had a chance to read it, it's up there on the screen, but uh, effectively came from a recent survey that we did of our chamber members and um, uh, effectively as a reminder that we need to continue to work better with the township uh, towards the initiatives that you guys have in place with the um, uh, Imagine Colerain initiative and the strategic planning that you're doing. I feel like uh, as an outsider, I might, it might be a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, the new guy on the block doesn't know anybody but I also bring ideas that are fresh to the community from someplace else that either have worked or that have uh, tried in other places and um, willing to offer those up. So um, that's why I put that comment in there. Um, lastly, these initiatives um, that we have in place, I believe um, 
are important to this body specifically because the We Thrive initiative is not just the Chamber of Commerce. It's bringing uh, people across the community and Will uh, Mueller has been a tremendous uh, person to get to know. I've gotten to, uh, to, to know Will through the We Thrive initiative and, and he was one of the first people to welcome me uh, to the community. Um, the Emerging Leaders, if you haven't heard about them, um, it's a group that started in the 21 to 40 demographic across the uh, Coleraine Chamber community. Um, it's an opportunity for them to network and to uh, get to know the, um, uh, themselves a little bit better. And we are uh, working towards mentorship of those emerging leaders. We've got a lot of businesses that are, um, uh, that are multi-generational in nature. And uh, those leaders will actually uh, learn better from, potentially learn better from somebody outside of their organization than their parents or grandparents who have uh, gone before them in that business. And so we want to provide a, a place for them to, um, uh, to thrive. The uh, churches and nonprofits, uh, there's again a concerted effort on my part to reach out to the uh, <coughs> worshiping community and to those that are uh, uh, organizations like Side by Side and um, others across the community that uh, we can help either from a resources standpoint and connect um, uh, dollar resources or um, uh, human resources uh, towards an event like the, the uh, Community Give Back Day on October 10th. And it's important that we recognize that that connection can take place because those churches are also businesses. They have budgets, they've got staff, they've got uh, needs across the community and um, we just um, have a new brand new member in Whitewater Crossing over in Cleves. Uh, they're a 4,000 member church. I would imagine among those 4,000 members are some business owners that are across the community that um, you know, could benefit from the Chamber of Commerce. The uh, Lake Gloria project that you guys approved, uh, you know, that this board approved, um, uh, we've been approached to help with community days uh, as that uh, evolves and uh, we've embraced that as a way to give back to the community and I believe that we've got the resources a year or two from now once they've broken ground and those kinds of things come to fruition. Um, I've, uh, I mean, I, again, I could go on and on about this list, but um, the green initiatives, working with Rumkey, uh, with <coughs> regard to, uh, recycling initiatives across the business community, um, they have a strong interest in being able to do so, and I believe that that's good for our community. Uh, the less we put into the landfill uh, up the road, the better off we all are to be able to stretch that out. And uh, certainly, Northgate Mall, I've met almost every business owner or um, uh, manager in the 60 stores that remain in the mall. And uh, for us to be a voice or to at least uh, have their back, so to speak, as their business owners, just like all the others that are up and down Coleraine, with specific and different challenges than uh, those that are up and down Coleraine or on either side of it. So um, I've spent a great deal of time with them over the last, I don't know, six or eight weeks since they've opened back up. <coughs> so I, I, again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I've diverted from my notes and <laughs> I think thank you're- uh, but Thank you for your presentation. Um, your comment about getting the churches involved is, is fabulous. I've always felt that a lot of society's problems could be resolved by the involvement with the churches and instead of not rolling them into the, the um, business community just like everybody else. Most of the folks that are in business might be attending one of our churches, so why not bring them in as well? And we have a fantastic a wide variety of faiths represented here in, in Coleraine Township, and uh, there's, there's a, a lot of churches to, to uh, bring into the organization. I believe that's true, Dan. Thank you. Did, did Matt or, or Raj? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming out. Um, uh, I think that it's it's kind of odd because we kind of are on the same track i started uh, and then COVID hit and a lot of the things i wanted to do were kind of like but one of the things that that, that i saw um in this i think applies to the trustee to the board of trustees and the and the, the, the township governance and in uh the chamber in uh northwest schools board of education is they all do a great job but they're very compartmentalized um and, and i i'm excited to hear of partnering on things and working together because I think that 
I think that leverage moves moves things more quickly, and, and I agree. And there's a, you know, I uh, hopefully we can get through all this and <laughs> um, at one point and, and and start to move ahead. And I know that uh, you know, I, I'm very happy with your presence here, and I appreciate uh, what you've done. And, and I think that you know, I think that we have the same kind of general sense of of how to move this forward through more cooperation and. And uh, I think that that's going to be important in, in the months to come. So thank you. You're welcome. Dave, I got a simple remark to make. Uh, when I first met with you, uh, then I strongly believe that you build a good relationship with the chamber and the township, which is very critical. It is very important that the business community has to involve with the township interest, their concerns. After all, we all working together, one purpose, to help the help our community make it stronger. And uh, I strongly believe that you will do that. And your presentation uh, gave the all the remarks that how you're going to lead. I appreciate you saying that. Um, again, I'm a believer that many hands make light work. And uh, if you don't have hands available, you typically go back to the same well. You go to the same people if you're in a, a little league or a soccer uh, community. Those same coaches come back year after year after year because you don't have that fresh uh, idea and initiative. We started with 165 members when I uh, began in uh, early mid-February. We have over 200 members at this point. Um, under the circumstances, uh, I'm extremely pleased. I know our board is pleased with that. Um, I would have been, been happy with that um, pre-COVID but especially in the COVID situation where I'm not able to go up and down the street and hand out business cards and introduce myself. People have kept at arm's length. So I've had to make phone calls and rely upon the community to make introductions and say, and, and I've done this so many times, much the way you would in a church. Uh, if you have a new neighbor that comes into your community and you're happy with your worship leader, you say, hey, come with me on Sunday to that next door neighbor. My hope is that people that are involved in the Chamber of Commerce say, hey, why don't you come join us or come check out what the emerging leaders are doing. Uh, come check out what the small group is doing. Get involved in uh, a local initiative like We Thrive or the Community Give Back Day. And, and then they'll realize the, the people that are, are foundational to that um, are, are trying to make a, a better place to live and uh, work in the community. And, and I think that's going to be good for all of us. So I'm glad to be a part of the community. Well, thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate thank your time. Yep, thank you. And uh, Mr. Unger, that concludes our presentations for this evening. I've got um, three. We didn't receive any emails uh, for citizen comment, but I believe there are three folks that um, are here today that would like to come in and, and give citizen sure. comment. Sure. And uh, did, did you want to read them, Raj? My, your mic, your mic. Any, uh, hey, Raj, can, huh? let, let's let the, the folks that are oh, okay, right outside right. speak first, okay, and then we'll we'll go to the other ones. Good, good, good. Thanks. Okay, so we have. Um, I don't, Mark. If you want to bring in, uh, it looks like Kane Denny signed up first, uh, Thomas Bell second, and Keith Miller third. If you want to set them up. Hello, Kane. Uh, you can come right up to the microphone, and um, and since you're broadcasting, you can remove your mask, and that way we'll get better sound feed. Uh, can you pick him up okay, Dana? All good? Cool. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. You can introduce yourself? Of course. Um, my name's Kane Denny. I've lived in Coleraine for around 15 years now. I'm a graduate of Coleraine High School. I am currently at University of Cincinnati for Information Technology, and I also work out in Marymount doing website design work. Um, I'm also a skater at uh, Clifford Skate Park. Um, it's one of my favorite parks in the region, personally. And uh, I think it's a lot of peop other people's favorite parks because it's a place where we go to relax, hang out, have fun. It's a community not just for men, but also girls, also young children, people of any really walk of 
life from what I've seen. And it's a very welcoming community as well, which I think is one of the more highlights of it versus something like Joyce Park. Um, going forward, sorry. What's going on with Joyce Park? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally nervous. Um, That's okay. Yeah, so um, right now, Joyce Park, we just celebrated its 10th birthday. Uh, it was on September 18th. Clifford Park. Park, thank you. Uh, we just celebrated its 10th birthday on uh, Friday the 18th. It was really fun, but it also um, over the past 10 years, it also has seen a lot of deterioration. And in the form of that, we've seen the concrete become unlevel with each other, therefore creating big little marks where you can trip your board right over. We're also seeing huge chunks of concrete coming out of the ground, cracks in the foundation in general. So that's really kind of, not only is it unsafe, but it's also just not fun to look at. And I think that it's kind of time for us to start at least planning for and addressing for the park to gain these repairs and uh, I don't know, and also advance the park itself. So, you know, we're still up there with these rugged metal tables where people can poke themselves. They can get stabbed if they're not being careful and they're just not comfortable either. And they're also just broken in from the past 10 years. We have um, no recycling bins, which I think is kind of strange, uh, depending a lot of people will be there. I mean, they're throwing out plastic water bottles constantly, so they keep throwing stuff in the trash, I feel is kind of wasteful. And also, it's just a huge glazed slab. We're not really doing anything with any of the surrounding areas. So like, you know, we don't have flowers, we don't have paint on the park. So when we, we're just looking at concrete the entire time, which I also don't think is that much fun. On top of that, uh, over the past 10 years, skateboarding has progressed as a whole. So the obstacles that we were asking for 10 years ago, while we still love them and we still want to keep those, we're also looking to add on to the park through just small additions. We're not looking for, you know, these major things that will cost thousands of dollars. We're looking for stuff like, like two rails and a mini ramp something that will add variety to the park more variety but will also keep things at a lower cost um, we think that doing these additions will bring a lot of cash flow to the park in terms of because we already have a lot of um, I'm getting ahead of myself. We get a lot of tourism from around the tri-state area. So a lot of people from Indiana, a lot of people from Kentucky, a lot of people from Upper Ohio will come down the Clipper Park because we're one of the better parks in the area, which I am really proud of personally. Um, but if we're able to add more to that, we'll be able to increase more business to our surrounding community and be able to see tangible benefits to our surroundings. And we'll also be able to kind of, I don't know, with this kind of project, we're gonna be able to get a more community feedback, we're gonna be able to kind of bring people more together at Clipper Park, which I think would be a really big benefit, not just for the people there, but also for the people of the greater community, because I'm hoping that with a positive relationship with the township and being able to do these things, that will kind of encourage people to go from just like, okay, well, we got the skate park down, so like, what else can we do for the community around us? It'll kind of inspire people. That's one of the big things I'm hoping for. Um, so yeah, I have a general five point that we like all sat down as a community we sat down and said okay what do we want what do we want to see that kind of thing and uh, our number one is to address and plan for any repairs to the park so that's in terms of the chipped uh, concrete any of the chunks that are coming out stuff that's just deteriorating get those replaced get that fixed or at least plan for it we're not asking for anything like within the next two months or anything we're just looking to start kind of getting a conversation going more so than anything we're also um, one of our obstacles isn't properly installed so we're looking and it's a it's a pole jam just goes straight in the ground and we're looking to get that re-implanted so that way we can it's basically just chips up the concrete every time people skate it so we're hoping to if we can actually properly reinstall it we can avoid further destruction to the park further deterioration um, we're also looking for repairs and addition of amenities for the community. So um, our two water fountains uh, don't work and they haven't worked. One of them hasn't worked for the past year and another one hasn't worked for the past, I'd say, two to three years. And I think when you're th talking about, and we're also right next to a basketball court. So when you think about people doing these strenuous activities for hours on end, we don't even have access to water. We have to walk all the way across the park. I don't think that's really fair to us. And also, um, if we're, and also we're just looking for general updates, like, like I said, with the benches as well. Um, um, we're also looking for the addition of recycling bins and then we have a lot of people who are just have a lot of downtime a lot of kids come up there a lot of kids who won't, won't even skate they'll just sit there and watch a skate and they'll just hang out so we're looking for addition of stuff like a free library box something that's only like 150 bucks that we can put material in so when people are coming up they're not just sitting there watching us they can also actively maybe get experience in something and spark interest in another hobby and I think that would be really awesome and then also like I said plans for additions to the park 
we're only asking for in regards to that we came up with only three obstacles we want which specifically flat bar a rail and a mini ramp those are our biggest things and they're really not that much money and one of the shelters that we currently have actually already has the flat ground required for a mini ramp so it'd be a very easy very basic installation it wouldn't be anything too crazy and also we're just looking to further i don't know uh, foster a relationship with the uh, township so that way in the future we can have an easier process of being like okay here's who, what we need here's who we can contact in the township to talk to about this and um Overall, I mean, my past three years, I've been skating there. I've been skating my whole life, but the past three years specifically, I've been skating at Clipper a lot. I mean, it's changed my life for the better. I know a lot of people who have been personally impacted by the park and the people at the park who would say the same. And there's only two of us tonight due to the COVID restrictions, but if we were able to bring more people, we would have brought up a whole lot more. We have a lot of support behind this, a lot of people asking for this, and it would really help out not only us, but I think the community at large, if we can start a process of this going. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm missing. Um, yeah, I mean, generally just we want a higher degree of safety for the park. We just want more additions. We want more fun. And we just don't want to look at a big gray slab all the time. And well, I think it's well really th nice. th thank you, Kane, and thank you for taking the time to, to meet with me Sunday. As I mentioned Sunday, the trustees can't talk to each other outside of meetings, so I wanted you to come here. So, so and I don't know if you've met with the other two or not because... Oh, yeah. Okay, now uh, the email. So. Okay, yes, I've I got an email. Yes. Actually, right. I, I told Dan, I got a couple of emails. Uh, I'm going to, you know, well, if, if you've got his, that. I think he just yeah. went through it. So yeah, he went through it, and thank you, thank you for your concern. We'll, uh, and Ro Rog is much more of a skateboarder than I am. I've I've <laughs> seen him. He's really good. You might you might invite either one of these guys over to. I, I watched, and uh, frankly, that's a lot of stuff I can't do and wouldn't do. Me too. It's okay. But I, but I, but you've got some real talent over there. But, um, but, uh, and then Jackie O'Connell is our public works director, and that's probably the person you should uh, talk to. And uh, the, some of those repairs need to be, you know, full cut down into the concrete and just yes. replace. It's not. You're not asking for anything too great because I went over and looked at it. It's just a, a lot of little repairs and very natural wear and tear on a, a ten-year-old structure and concrete being a, a rigid pavement it will crack yes of and course. and um it's been in 10 or 11 years whenever it was originally put in with the skate park and um and so there's just some natural aging and wear and tear but i, w I would ask that you uh you know jackie will follow up with you mrs mrs o'connell and um and uh, you guys can do whatever you want did you guys have any comments? no I, I talked to mr mills about this and i don't know if you haven't i was going to ask you during your uh, administrative report okay if okay I mean, I don't know if you want to say now or if you, while we have yeah, sure. uh, Mr. Denny here. Uh, yeah. Sure. What's up? No, I'd, I'd ask about. Uh, oh, about I, this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you. First of all, like of I, it is so, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the way that you've interacted with the township. I mean, Absolutely. You, guys, you guys have like identified a problem. It's something that you care about in our community and like you're taking time out of your day and your life to come here and share that passion. I really appreciate it. Um, and it's funny because the first time I mentioned it to Jackie, she was like, oh my gosh, yes, we need to fix that. Like, so we are, we, we understand the problem. I love that there's a group of committed folks to being champions for the park. And, um, uh, and, and now then you get into this place of, of like bureaucracy, right? So what happens now is that um, uh, we need to identify the projects, we need to get uh, prices, and we need to budget for them. Yes. And sometimes that can take time. Of course. Um, but, uh, but and I would like to, sorry to interrupt you, no, but no. I would like no. to say in regards to budgeting for it, uh, for the community, we're willing to put on fundraisers, gain sponsors from Clipper or Corain itself. We're willing to put in extra, just volunteer work, extra time, effort, and our own resources into this because we don't want it to just be a one-way street where we come asking you guys for stuff. Totally. We want to build a collaborative agreement here where we can go like, okay, we're going to put in our stuff if you guys can back us as well. And that right there is how everything in the world gets done. I mean, it's, you know, it's through collaboration and partnership, and uh, I just really appreciate that. And, and you're in, um, uh, Mr. Unger is exactly right. Uh, Jackie is going to be your best point of contact. And yes. um, so we've already, yeah, we've already started. So I'm awesome. very excited to awesome. get this going. I appreciate you guys. Hey, look, I appreciate you. Thank you, no sir. No problem. And then um, next up, this will be Tom. He was involved with the original design process awesome. of the park. So oh, you're, you're the Tom of Thomas Bell. But and Kane, keep please keep in touch with me as as this goes on and kind of keep me updated and we'll get back and forth. Yes, I, I, I didn't know that was your name and the last Tom Bell I knew was my driving instructor from Bell's driving instruction uh, when I was 16 years old and you're not him so. No, I am not. 
Hi, I'm Thomas Bell. I'm 41 years old. I've been skating since I was seven years old. You don't look 41, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've graduated from Mount Healthy High School. I used to live over here in Coleraine for a while. Now I live over on the east side of town. Um, I was here for the original design process for the park. Uh, I dealt with Kevin. Yeah. Um, there was about 20, 22 of us that came to the meeting. They really heard us. It was a wonderful experience. Um, the way Kevin explained to me, he said, you know, all these townships got basketball courts, tennis courts, soccer fields, multiple baseball fields, but there's not one skate park. So when he made that happen for Coleraine Township, it was, it was like just the coolest thing I ever was a part of. And when it happened, we had a very reputable concrete company and it is Grindline Skate Parks. They are design and builders. They actually designed our plan for the, the park, which I still have the original <laughs> plan. That's awesome. That and they were supposed to oversee and supervise the pouring of the park if another contractor built it. And that's what happened. We were supposed to have originally three hundred eighty thousand dollars skate park, and I believe it dropped down to about two hundred to one hundred eighty, because some things got removed, which is fine. We still got the vast majority of what we wanted at the park. At the same time, being that they didn't supervise, here we are today, you know, asking for repairs because someone wasn't really that qualified when they built it. Um, you know, they did a good job, but they didn't do an acceptable job like Grindline would have. There's, there's parts where there's concrete cracks. You can see there's no rebar tying things together. We got a lot of things shifting. I'm not going to go into all that. Kane beautifully said a lot of things, and I'm very glad for what he said because he just pretty much summed up a lot of things I wanted to address as well. On that point, you know, we do want to try to see if we can get any type of repairs done. And then at the same time, years ago, a few of my friends talked with the city of Moraine and we talked with them about adding stuff to that skate park built by the skateboarders and they allowed us, but we had to do it in a way to where it was still ran through the city. You know, we got to get something framed up, get something ready to pour concrete to, but then we want to still make sure it's, it's okay with you guys that we were to add something. So we worked with the city of Moraine. We did that. We built multiple obstacles. They still continue to let us build there today. And it's just all off of the existing slab that's there. With that being said, we're also looking to see if we could possibly have permission to do anything like that at our park. Brainstorm ideas with the fellow skateboarders. Everybody s sort of agree on one certain thing and then make it happen. And if we could get that permission as well, I would be ecstatic because like he said, we're willing to put our own time, resources, money, get volunteers, get supporters, and actually do a lot of work ourselves. I've been in the construct construction industry since 1998. I'm an electrician, I'm an independent contractor, but I've done a lot of stuff over the years. So with that being said, if we were to get any type of permission for like that, we don't want just any old person in Coleraine Township just coming there and just thinking they could build whatever they want. We really want to make sure it's still approved with you guys and make sure it's something that is safe too because some people could build some things and don't finish them, but we don't want to have that presented to you if we were to add something to the park. We would want you to walk up and it look like it's already been there. Like, wow, this looks like it's been there. So we're hoping that we could ask you that as well. Great. I, I would ask that um, you communicate with Jackie O'Connell, our public works director, and, and uh, she would bring ideas uh, through her to us, and, and that would probably be the right yes, order of things to happen. So.
Absolutely. But uh, you, you, have, you and uh, Kane are, are two uh, good speakers, and we don't have a whole lot of people come to us and offer to pay for improvements. I so mean, if, you know, if, if the township says, hey, you want to build a quarter pipe there and you're going to pay for it, go for it, then I'm going to get the money. To pay <laughs> well, great. <laughs> if you, please uh, please uh, communicate with Jackie, and, and uh, that, that sounds That's great. great. That is great. So. That is a great start, and I'm really, really excited to hopefully just, you know, introducing skateboarding to a lot of people. You're never too old to start. There was <laughs> yes, a, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am too. <laughs> there, was Chinese, there was a Chinese man just on the internet the other day, 81 years old, just learned how to skateboard. Well, that's so. that's that's a ways off for me, but I will when I'm 81 too. So, <laughs> but just to just to sum it up, we really appreciate your time. We really thank you guys for hearing us. Great, you're, you're I love that skate park. And I don't know what else to say other than we want to hopefully, you know, get some things. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing from you. Uh, you both are good presenters. Thanks. So, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Your, your dream will come true. <laughs> <laughs> your dream will come true. And um, Mark, if you could go. You know get what? I want to mention one thing about Jackie. She will make the things happen. Talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> she, no pressure. She done it. She done it. She's amazing. Yeah, we're very excited. She will make it happen. Great. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. And, uh, and Mark, Mark, if you could bring in Keith Miller. I knew that pole jam was not working properly. I've never <laughs> been a skater. I don't even know what it is. I've roller skated, but not... Um, not. Um, but I'm glad they came because I don't know a thing about it. Yeah, go over and have a look. It's, um, yeah. I mean, it's, there's just some... I don't think it's any misdesign. I just think it's from being 10, 11 years old. That's what I think too. Yeah. Because concrete's rigid and it will crack. So. In a, in Hello, Keith. Hi, Good evening, Keith. Uh, I'm going to be pretty redundant tonight because I held this off. I was going to talk about this on Har uh, Harlow's last night, but I let it go because she had her two small kids here, and I didn't want to call her a criminal in front of her kids. So. The way it is is, if you remember. They done an audit ahead of the Harlow's books, okay? And they quit. They said it was so confusing, they just walked away and quit. That's not what you do. When they found Heather's Harlow's books so confusing, they were supposed to pull her in the federal courthouse and make her explain all of that. And they did not. So whoever done the audit's already guilty. Heather should still be pulled into the federal courthouse and made to explain her bad books and not hear somebody tell me that, it was too confusing, we quit. That's what they did, they quit on us. So who, I don't know who done the audit, but it was wrong when they turned their back on Corain Township and let Heather's Harlow's bad books remain record. So I expect, and I'm gonna talk about it every two weeks until Heather Harlow is pulled into the federal courthouse and charged. You're gonna hear about this every two weeks because I will be here. And you pull a special meeting, I'll be here to talk about it then too, so you all know that. Because I'm going to keep pursuing this until Heather Harlow is prosecuted and we straighten out the books in this room and where our monies went. Because it is against the law to keep bad books. I've been watching new, the federal news. Bad books is pulling the federal courthouse. I made a little note tonight. Let's see. I don't know if you remember Trump said how your schools are brainwashing your kids to hate America. Did anybody hear that? Trump told everybody the schools are brainwashing your kids to hate America. So I pondered on that. And friends of mine and other people have told me about Rumpke. What are you going to do with the garbage? And I'll tell you what. If you sit back and let that dump continue to grow, I look at that as hate for Coleraine Rain Township because it's not love. It's not even caring. It's hate. So Trump's right. Your schools are brainwashing you to hate America because that dump should have never been allowed to expand. I was at that meeting. It was so disappointing. Less than 100 people showed up there. I mean, you was there, Raj. You was there, Dan. That meeting should have been so crowded. There should have been people outside waiting. There should have been 150 people signed up to talk even. But you've all been brainwashed to love Rumpke and Garbage is a gift, apparently. I don't think so myself. Let's see. Back to my notes. I said it only has four words on it. Okay. 
The other one I was to talk about is how many people in this building moved a couple hundred miles away to work here? Don't you find that questionable? Why people are moving to Coleraine Township to work? You know, Trump's also signed an executive order that you don't need that college education for these jobs anymore. So maybe we can start hiring our neighbors again. Our neighbors are in this building. When the Ritter came into this building, he fired all of our neighbors. You do know that, don't you? He cleaned house. All of our neighbors are fired. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel better now. So I'm going to thank the trustees for listening and say good night to everybody. Thank you, thank Keith. You, Keith. And uh, that was the three uh, folks that we had signed up for citizen comment. Did you have? I, I got one. I got a can, but he already talked. If Kane's already uh, spoken, then yeah. yeah. This and, email, I don't know if you guys got the email from John Cracciolo. About the pickleball? Pickleball yeah. and the sport facilities. Uh, what, I, I read, he's got a pretty lengthy uh, email, uh, but I told the uh, most essence of the, um, he said, he, you talk about he's been living in this township for 40 years, raised children, built two houses here, and he talks about there's no uh, sport facilities in uh, Coleraine Township. He, he says, I mentioned, he went around that other townships, I saw a lot of uh, sport facility being built, and, 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 and they're doing that. And something pretty much reflects what these two gentlemen just said earlier. I mentioned traveling outside the township where there are facilities. Some of these, uh, these include Springdale, Sharonville, <coughs> Harrison, and Green Township, the last being a perfect example of a you know, forward-thinking township that has two beautiful courts in Bicentennial Park and is currently building four more in Kaluga Park. Uh, this is amazing that a township much smaller than the largest township in Ohio can manage to provide these facilities to its residents while coal rain cannot. Um, then he keep on saying that uh, the Green Township does not have a significant business industry base like us. I would think it operates such a small, much smaller budget, and yet they somehow manage to do this. Um, then he keep on saying that um, uh, what, what what, he, what he's saying is also many surrounding township cities, municipalities have beautiful state-of-the-art community centers with exercise rooms, tracks, indoor gyms, swimming pools. And what, what he, and finally he says, and uh, you like to see, uh, you know, I certainly do commend the township, our township, uh, Colin Township, building a heritage park, a beautiful area. It has a ball field, frisbee golf, and a dog park. Maybe this would be an ideal location to add some pickleball courts. So what essentially is saying that we need to focus on building some uh, sport facilities for the people to come and play games and you know enjoy these uh, good exercise things. And something that we, I, I agree with this guy, that we need to focus on building some sport facilities. Okay, thank you, Raj. Um, I, Mark, was there anyone else out there that wanted to speak? I only had three names on the list. And with Raj reading that email, uh, that would conclude the, the uh, citizens address component of the meeting, and we will move into administrative reports, Mr. Mills. Yes, sir, Mr. Unger, thank you. We'll begin our administrative reports with the uh, police chief, Mark Denny. No report this evening. Uh, I know that the fire chief has no report. Mike, do you have a report? Okay. Mr. Mike Iona from the planning department. Good evening, board members. Uh, Mike Iona here, Director of Planning and uh, Zoning. Just wanted to um, invite everybody out there in TV land to the Imagine Coal Rain digital input series tomorrow. Um, we've been hosting these input series. They're online. Uh, you can go onto the website, imaginecoalrain.com, and join in a discussion about different topics uh, about Coal Rain Township. Tomorrow is our fifth and final series. It is on Coal Rain Township as a whole. Um, and again, I just want to invite everybody out there in TV land to join us. Um, for the, uh, the final event. Again, imaginecoalrain.com, 6 p.m., and you can join from the convenience of your phone, home tablet, um, and uh, basically any computer. So and if you have any questions, feel free to email or call the department. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, Mr. Iona. And I will see if Jackie has... Ms. O'Connell, do you have a report this evening? Okay. The next report will be delivered by uh, Public Services Director Jackie O'Connell. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. They were just trying to convince me to skate. And <laughs> anything off of tennis shoes, I am no good at. So. You wait long enough. I've seen this on Back to the Future. There will actually be hoverboards, and you won't have to skate. <laughs> Again, if I have to get off my feet, Mr. Wallert, it's, it's <laughs> ugly. So um, I got a couple, just a couple things, all good news on the agenda for my agenda this evening. One, we opened up the Bullpen Dogs Small Dog Park area at the uh, Dog Park Heritage Park tonight. So. Thank you, Mr. Raj Gopal and Mr. Unger for being there and our, our canine friends who were there as well. We had a nice little turnout for that. So very excited about that. So it's a new place right in a far side of right field where you might find uh, the uh, home uh, visiting team bullpen. You can uh, go and bring your little pup there. It's at Heritage Park on East Miami River Road. Okay. Uh, secondly, Recycle Day is this Saturday. It's uh, September 26th from eight until two. Uh, here on the complex from 4200, 4300, and 4160. You'll come in uh, by 4160. We will take all sorts of trash and recyclables from the um, from Colerain Township residents. You must be a resident and bring an ID with you in order to uh, recycle that day. We'll take your old tires, we'll take your electronics for a fee, we'll take your Freon for a fee, we'll take whatever you want to get rid of that you've been cleaning out during COVID, we'll take it. And lastly, uh, very excited to announce that we are going to be working with Catholic Charities who are working with the, I'm going to read it so I get it right, the USDA, USDA Farms to Families Food Box Distribution. The, uh, we're hosting an event here on October 26th, and anybody in the community can come and get free food from the USDA. Catholic Charities is distributing it for, from, for them. Uh, we don't know what kind of boxes we will have yet, but it's free of charge. You do not need to pre-register. And we'll also be asking for volunteers from the community to come out and help your neighbors. So, And those will be, so uh, Senator Portman's office uh, um, uh, called about this a couple, about a month ago. Um, and I talked to Nan Cahill from, from his office. This will be dairy products? Maybe. Maybe, okay. But, it, it, but the others will be, they're all fresh. And that's yes. why there's, there's, I mean, it, we have to get get it in and get it out quickly because it, it, it kind of expires, but that's not often that you're able to give out fresh food. Um, Correct. Yeah, yeah, this isn't canned goods. This is a box of produce and then hopefully a box of dairy, hopefully a box of protein. They said they haven't given out a box of protein yet because they haven't been able to secure a vendor, but they're hoping for protein. And there was one other box, which I don't remember what it was, but it takes a lot of volunteers to mobilize for this. They're anticipating giving out 1,400 boxes of food. So please come. You can pick up for your neighbors. If you have elderly neighbors or neighbors who haven't left um, because of quarantine issues, please pick up food for them. I believe at St. X, they were 20, 25 pounds of, of a basket box. Box, yeah. yeah. And uh, for people that don't know this, through the United USDA um, uh, Farmers to Families program, where they buy the um, access um, farm products to keep the price stable, and um, Senator Portman was a big part of let's move that so that we can give those to people that need it instead of just destroying it, which had been the, I don't know, since the Great Depression pretty much had been kind of the practice. So um, it's an exciting thing. And I thank you so much for taking the, uh, when Mr. Mills said that you took the lead in that, I'm like, oh, thank God, because I, we had trouble finding a loading dock. And, you know, th these are semis. These aren't like, you know, you know somebody's subaru bringing stuff in it's it's a pretty it's significant a thing deal. yeah, yeah. They, they spend about four or five hours just unloading mm -hmm. the trucks so no oh, we've got to arrange the uh, the police department's helping us out with traffic and traffic flow so we're very excited we think this is going to be a really good that be event. right here yep and yeah. and is there a residency requirement for no this residency or? requirement this is open to all hamilton county residents they were looking for a northwest distribution point and they found one with us so Okay, great. Um, we will be the furthest one outside the city, I believe she said. Great. So. And, uh, and thank you for talking to, to Kane and, and Tom and uh, let us know what you uh, gather up from the skate park group. Okay. Yes, I will. I do not expect me to skate, though, because, again, <laughs> it would be a bad, bad scene. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. And uh, Jeff Mills? Thank you, Jackie. Yep, I have two items on uh, my admin report this evening. Um, the first thing is uh, related to Halloween. So um, uh, the Hamilton County Public Health Commissioner, Greg Kesterman, has passed along um, Halloween um, 
uh, best practices for, for COVID this year. Um, we anticipate Halloween being the exact same time and date as always. And um, uh, at our next uh, Board of Trustees meeting, um, we anticipate there being an item on there where the Board of Trustees, as they do every year, uh, set the uh, hours of operation for Halloween. And uh, so uh, we get these calls this time of year, just about every year. And, um, you know, nobody believes that uh, in Colerain Township, Halloween will be canceled at this point. So uh, Halloween is a go in Colerain and we'll establish that at the next meeting. Does that make sense? And this is, seems to be a very easy solution. If you don't want to participate, don't take your kids out and turn your light off. Um, right. And I mean, and people have the right to do that. And I know that there are different elements, levels of fear. And yep. I mean, I, I think this, this should be a no brainer when it comes to that, so. Yeah, I mean, but, we'll, we'll be sure to share all of the best practices at the uh, October 11th meeting when it's a little bit closer to Halloween um, so that so we remember um, what the recommendations are from uh, public health. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the second thing I wanted to share with you all is that we are um, we are entering into the uh, the most active part of uh, of the planning year. Right. So each each year we develop a uh, strategic plan and a budget and um, we are uh, embarking on that process right now. Um, at the last meeting, uh, you'll recall that uh, you all gave us great guidance on what your top priorities are for 2021. I appreciate that. Um, we have uh, had a leadership retreat where we've talked to department directors on, on what their operational goals are and ways to improve operations and efficiencies in the organization. And um, the usually we would have town hall meetings uh, with residents. Um, and, uh, and, and other stakeholders to come and give their input. Obviously, you know, COVID has put a, a hamper on a lot of this, but we still really, really want to get that input from residents. Um, and so um, Assistant Administrator Weckbach has developed a, um, a survey that will be going out in, in the next week um, to, in fact, I believe it's gonna go out tomorrow morning um, and to solicit uh, what is it that you would like your police department to focus on in 2021? What is it that you'd like your fire department to focus on in 21, et cetera? Um, and, and then once we get that, um, uh, uh, we will have a second survey. Uh, and so our hope is that uh, in that way, we'll be able to solicit feedback from, from residents on the direction that they'd like to see the township go in the next year. Um, we will be um, having budget meetings in the next two weeks with our department directors. Uh, to talk about uh, their proposals for 21 and to vet those proposals and and um, it's a it's a nail biter of a of a couple hours but um, uh, in the end we're all friends and and uh, we we make it through as soon as we have recommendations uh, we'll sit down and well before we have recommendations we'll be sitting down individually with each one of you um, in early october to um, to get your input on on budget and where where you want to see the budget for next year uh, and then we'll synthesize all of that information um, into, uh, into a recommendation that uh, ultimately will be presented, hopefully for first review in November at our November meeting, and then for adoption, uh, temporary appropriations in December. So um, it's amazing to me that, we are, uh, that we've made it through uh, 2020 uh, so fast. It's like Janu I saw a meme that was January, February, COVID, December, and, and that's, that's about the way it feels. Um, but we're, we're, making, we're making it, and uh, we look forward to having these really important discussions with you and uh, with our residents in the near future. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, with the conclusion of the administrative reports, that would bring us to trustees' report. Um, Matt or, or Raj, would either one of you want to go first? Or? I'll go if that's... Yeah, if go that ahead, works. Matt. Um, just a, a couple of items. Um, First off, on a kind of an unrelated side note, uh, I know a lot of you saw in the news, um, just uh, keep in mind the, the family of um, Moore High School, former Moore High School student Michael Curran, the University of Dayton, who was involved with a, just a tragic incident it, on the campus. Um, in, in the family's history, he, he had lost his father when they did a 5K together uh, when he was, I think, in the seventh or eighth grade. Um, and I know that, you know, Elder and Mueller kind of rivals, and Colerain plays Mueller as well. And, and you know, when it comes to times like these, obviously uh, rivalry means nothing. And you know, they're you know, they're our brothers, and um, it's just sad to hear. Um, the um, I just want to extend my thanks. Everybody has been just police, fire, public services, planning, and zoning administration have been um, burning the midnight oil, so to speak. Um, um, police made another quick arrest. Um, 
was that Thursday, when, Tuesday, Monday? I can't even keep track. Monday morning. Um, and, and I appreciate the hard work on that. Um, the um, uh, the I-275, um, uh, We I talked to Mr. Mills about that. We talked to um, ODOT about that. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we had this discussion um, last last meeting about um, kind of weighing the, the, the putting out fires figuratively versus, you know, putting together more of a comprehensive plan to deal with this thing. Um, and 275 I, is, you know, I think we're going to attack the litter first, which I'll get to in a second. In the 275, we're going to be doing that, but probably uh, more towards the spring in working on those. Um, and I was happy to hear the uh, 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 Dave talk about the um, chamber being interested at as well. I think that that matters. Um, later on today, I'm going to be making a motion, actually two motions um, during new business, uh, to one, to hire two kind of trash slash litter for the chlorine corridor, especially to work with, um, uh, um, um, to, to work at uh, public right away in picking up in, in I, I know that Mr. Weckback has talked to the folks at the recycle fund and that's something that could be paid for out of that. And I, that to me is one of the issues I really want to get us get, get um, just throw resources until we get it kind of uh, taken care of and, and moving in that direction. And the other part is, um, and, and I toyed if it should be one or two code enforcement part time uh, to redo the organizational chart to add that. And, and the motion I'll make will be for one part time with the idea that, look, I mean, if we need to, we can certainly revisit that. Um, but I want to give these folks the resources. You know, they, I, I hope people don't misunderstand me. I think they've done a fantastic job with very limited amount of hours. And I just want to give them more tools to, to get to this is a big place to, to address all this. Um, so I want to give them all that's necessary. Uh, and later, um, and I know it's just a first read, and, and I appreciate, um, um, you know, our legal for putting together the massage parlor uh, thing. Um, uh, I had gotten some information that was a little bit troubling as to some of these uh, were not quite maybe what they seem like. And I took a look around at some of the other townships and how they dealt with, um, how they dealt with handling uh, these things. And, um, um, and there are precedents for a township under home rule to have um, to have involvement in that, and we can talk about that when that comes along. Um, other than that, um, sorry I missed the dog park opening, which would be a normal thing for me, but Kobe can't go to the small dog park, so <laughs> he's about 60 pounds past that. Um, and then thank you to uh, Dan and Raj for all your hard work as well. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Go ahead, Raj. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Chief, for the outstanding police work on this, uh, uh, making an arrest on this suspect on the homicides. Uh, it's a good investigative work. Actually, one of the things happened, that carjacking, I happened to be in the Coldrain Avenue. I saw the real investigative work of our police officers. It's wonderful. My commendation goes to them. Um, uh, I'll make a very simple remarks. I, uh, I, I, I was talking to Jeff Eckbach. We may have about $10,000 grants for the recycling program, and um, Jeff came up with some ideas uh, how can we can do that, and Jeff also suggested one of the things that we talked about, uh, Jeff Mills, is uh, the, the bus stop probably placing the garbage cans and uh, with the money we'll get maybe probably use it for like a recycling purpose. Also, Jeff Weckbach came up with some idea recycling uh, oil. People, when they change motor oil in the cars, at least they can have, uh, we have a place where they can dump it and use it for the recycling. So also, uh, the, the, the residents watching this meeting, if you have any innovative ideas on how we can use that grant, uh, please, call me or text me, uh, even uh, email me, okay? And <clears throat> that's one thing uh, I s served in the Solid Waste Committee. Also, we they plan to buy four cameras uh, and uh, they're gonna, uh, they want us to s say where they can install the camera. If we actively monitor all this dumping, we're gonna, we need, we're gonna catch those, all the people doing the illegal dumping and we're gonna put the cameras 
but we're not going to tell where we're going to put, but we are going to put the cameras. We are going to catch this illegal dumping people, and we are going to send them to the jail, you know, prosecute them. And, and we, are, we are serious about this, and like I said, Matt also very serious about Dan, Matt, you know, we are we all, all the trustees serious about administration, Jeff Mills, Jeff Eckbach, and serious about cleaning Corin Township. And um, that's uh, one of the project also we talked about when, when I was in the Solid Waste Committee meeting and, and hiring a maybe part-time another deputy sheriff uh, to enforce the Ill, uh, the uh, illegal dumping and like that. And, and uh, right now, um, we have a full-time uh, law enforcement people there. If you, you can call this number, um, enforcement deputy, by calling this number, 513-946-7788. That is 513-946-7788. Also, you can visit the website reportdumping.org, and, um, and, and, and we are going to seriously take these matters and also prosecute the people who are doing the illegal dumping. Okay, uh, then another thing I'm really excited, waiting, uh, we'll have a meeting with the ODOT and the, uh, hopefully the Congressman Steve Shabers, uh, hopefully either September 28th or 29th, uh, talk about that art card and also the uh, corridor, corridor, corridor plan. And uh, this is all going to uh, initial stage, how we can make it happen. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. I have a, a few items for my trustee report. Um, as, as you all know, we don't talk to each other outside of meetings, so I'm, I'm glad to hear from Matt that as a result of some discussions at our at our other meetings that um, I too would consider a, a couple folks to go out and, and pick up litter in the right of way that might be the easiest and fastest way to get some some positive results and, and when that comes up I'm, I'm probably gonna ask Jeff Mills to look into that and see if we have I, I know there's been some talk of taking that out of the recycling funds budget but if you could come back to us at the next meeting but we'll discuss that when Matt brings it up um, I've gone out and done a lot of research on the trash picking up, meaning I've been out with some volunteers picking stuff up, and I noticed that a lot of it is around where bus stops are, and I know Queen City Metro um, passed their sales tax levy, and I'd still like uh, uh, Jeff Mills or your, or your designee to reach out to Queen City Metro and see if they would be willing to, to fund some cans at their Coleraine Avenue bus stops and other bus stops that are not on Coleraine Avenue. And, and go ahead and have them fund it and have them make arrangements to have the cans emptied before we would expense on that because uh, they won't let people on their buses right now with any food containers or anything and a lot of folks just set it down on the bench and it it accumulates and that that's been my personal discovery as i've as i've done that um as i've been out picking up with these volunteer groups um the um we've been talking a lot about the the i-275 interchange and i just if you go north on Coleraine Avenue and the, the if look to your left, meaning the southbound side of the interchange, uh, somebody's been doing a fantastic job cutting that. And I was up by there around lunchtime the other day, and I, I noticed that Rumpke has a pickup truck with a trailer, and they had a deck mower, and uh, somebody in a Rumpke vehicle was cutting that. I don't know if they cut that for ODOT or cut it for us or cut it out of benevolence to maintain it. Or Yes, that's correct. So that that's who's cutting the on the southbound side when you come over the bridge deck by the flag where by the flag, flag. Is. the yes, rumpy's sir. maintaining that uh, is that a donation they're making or yes, well, that, that's really fantastic and thanks to rumpy for for doing that i i noticed that was always well manicured i just never knew who was cutting it so um we also talked about our goals for for 2021 and i thought we had a good discussion at the last meeting um if you listen to the economic news one, one thing that's really up is is housing permits and new housing starts and and uh, you know we still have and it is privately owned property but I, I'm gonna my directive is one of the three of us to the administration is that is that you would uh, ramp up our, our work with the owners of Northgate Mall and I just the, the the plan that we got the grant for a couple years ago where they showed it as, as some housing on the site 
you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you to work with, with the owners of Northgate and see if you can find some way to encourage them to move forward. I, I mean, I think the time is, is ripe for some redevelopment on that site. So that, that's from Trustee Younger to you. That, that's one of the things I'd like you to work on. One of the other things is, is um, it is a tough time for retail uh, because our, our wonderful state government shut down so much stuff and so many people lost their their second quarter revenue and, and right now they're not operating at 100% and they're closing them down at 10 o'clock and all these other things. Um, and I know that when you started here and then before my time as a trustee, you were an economic development guy and now you're the administrator and I just, I'm just not sure that you have the time to put into economic development that we need. So I'm gonna ask you to, to take a look at the organization and see if there's a, a couple uh, folks in the organization that, that could help you with economic development. But you need to be administrating the township and you'll do better if you don't spread yourself too thin. But, but that would be my ask as, a, uh, as a, one of the three of us is that we, we really need to focus a little bit more on economic development. And, and um, Halloween, Trustee Younger's all for it. Um, I'll be out collecting candy. No, we, we have a nice subdivision and, um, and the kids do come to our door. And if you don't, as Trustee Wallert said, if you're uncomfortable participating, don't, but it's an outdoor activity and it's a great community builder. And I think some people are gonna see some of their neighbors they haven't seen in, in several months. So that'll be great. Um, the dog park uh, uh, opening this afternoon, that's uh, one of the fun parts of being a trustee, isn't it, Raj? You get to cut the little yellow ribbon and, and turn the docks hound loose. Um, the, uh, I wanted to comment that, that Waycross, um, throughout the course of the last several months when we have to have limited attendance at our meeting, uh, they, they continue to do a fantastic job as the third party making sure that as much stuff from the township that can get out, they, they get it out and I, I really appreciate their work. Um, as Jackie said, recycling day is this Saturday. Um, you don't have to dump your stuff on the side of the road. Saturday, we'll take it. So, so township residents, if you have any questions, call the administrative office. We have a, a full-time person answering the phone, a live human, and get all the information you need about recycling day. And my last thing is, is three weekends ago, um, ODOT resurfaced the bridge deck on Coleraine Avenue that goes over I-275. It was a traffic nightmare. And I've asked uh, Assistant Administrator Weckbach to, to monitor that and it, it seems that phase two of that, which is the other two lanes, is going to be this weekend, weather permitting. And I did notice they did have one sign up, you know, big electronic traffic sign warning folks that this weekend uh, they're gonna be grinding off the other half of that bridge deck. So, so uh, you know, feel free to go up and down the, the township, but there's, there's three other overpasses to use that are nearby Brem Road, Pippin Road, and, and Hamilton Avenue. I think you're gonna run into some traffic uh, there, there was quite a bit of it three weekends ago, so I just wanted to let the community know that weather permitting, that, that's probably going to happen. Is that correct, Mr. Weckbach? So, and then you'll get that out on Circle and uh, once again advise the community. And thank you for working with ODOT and getting those electronic traffic signs. The one southbound says weekend construction and it's flashing. And as you drive down Colerain, please notice that. And with that, um, I've taken up enough of our viewers' time, and I will pass the meeting back to, uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Mills for new business. Yes, sir. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Unger. Uh, thank you, board. That's great feedback for us. Uh, our new business begins in the public safety department, departments, and the uh, police department, and uh, the first item will be handled by Police Chief Mark Denny. Good evening, board. Chief. One item tonight, uh, recommend adoption of a motion to permit Township Administrator Jeff Mills to sign a purchase and user agreement with Intelligent Video Solutions. That's to replace and add interview room monitoring equipment and the agreement is in the amount of $19,247. This is for our interview rooms. Uh, the state of Ohio has mandates and certain crimes must be videotaped for those uh, confessions to be admissible in court. Homicide is one of those, uh, sexual assaults another, and we uh, we do have those, and, and it's important that we have the proper equipment that can be used in court and, and is able for the, the uh, jurors and the uh, judges to actually hear what gets said and, and actually have a, a clear view of that. So uh, we've, we've had that same equipment for a number of years, and it's time for a, a replacement of that. Chief, did I read this includes the storage of the data? Yes. Okay. Yes, and there's a warranty also uh, for... Like, is, what's the back? Because my days in North College Hill, I, I get a little cringy when I hear about storing this stuff because of the experience NCH Cincinnati 
we make our own storage on top of whatever okay. they offer us. So we, our detectives will take those interviews right away and they'll, they'll get them on media where they can keep them. We, we can't afford to lose those interviews. So, we so to get it very, to the floor. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll motion to authorize the township administrator to execute user agreement with intelligent video solutions for the purchase of inter interview room cameras. I will second that. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? I would just. Thank you. We Mike. made sure we got the right Mike. stuff. Yeah, it'll be beneficial for your upper, or for your uh, operations. And chief, with all the work that our officers do, it's it's important to be able to get a conviction. Otherwise, you're seeing the same people back out and out again. And I, I speaking for myself, and you'll probably hear it in the vote uh, from the other trustees. Our board of trustees supports our police department, and we want to fund you for these important items. And um, we want you to give you the tools so that our officers and you can be successful. So, um, was there any other comment? No. Uh, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Rajgopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Thank you very much, board. Thank you, Chief. The next two items are in the uh, uh, fire department, and I'll be delivering those this evening. Uh, the first one is a motion authorizing the purchase of six Lucas chest compression systems from Straker Medical. The recommendation is to adopt this motion. Uh, a, a Lucas chest compression system uh, is a, a piece of equipment um, that is used on cardiac arrest in incidents. Uh, it is one of the highest risks of occupational exposure to COVID-19 patients when our guys are uh, imagine the EMT paramedics um, on top of somebody delivering chest compressions to a cardiac arrest um, victim. Um, the Lucas chest compression allows for a distance to, um, to be created between the person and uh, the patient. Uh, this um, purchase is, um, would be paid for with the CARES Act uh, money that we discussed at our last meeting. So the recommendation is to adopt the motion. I'll motion to authorize to purchase six Lucas chest compression systems from Stryker Medical. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Rajgopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Wallace? Aye. Thank you, Board. The next item is a motion to authorize the purchase of face pieces for SCBA apparatus um, from Vogelpool Fire Equipment. Um, before I get started on this, I just want to note that <clears throat> how impressed I was um, with the method by which the fire department um, came to the conclusion to make this recommendation. So they established a Coleraine Fire Health and Workforce Safety Subcommittee that was com uh, that consisted of uh, firefighters and uh, and fire officers in our organization to study the issue of um, uh, shared face pieces, which is something that we have a have has been the past practice of Coleraine Township. Uh, to share face pieces in the in the breathing apparatus, um, and they did a deep dive. They provided a, a very in-depth uh, report and recommendation that was included in the um, in the agenda. Um, but uh, to boil it all down, uh, currently, um, when one shift turns over to the next, uh, the face pieces do not change. Uh, so you would be using the face piece of the person that sat in your seat the night before. And uh, in this time of COVID, that we feel like that is not a, a, a good uh, workable option and CARES money is available to pay for the purchase of new face pieces so that every uh, firefighter paramedic has their own face piece. Recommendation is to adopt the motion. A motion to authorize the purchase of face pieces for uh, SCBA apparatus from Vogelpool Fire Equipment. All seconded. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Rajgopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Very good. Thank you, Board. Uh, the next item is uh, a, a public services item of new business, and that will be delivered to you by Director Jackie O'Connell. Good evening again. Turn the screen. I bring you a labor of love that uh, has been in the making since long before I got here. The Coleraine Park Playground, to replace the Megaland Playground that was uh, torn out in early 2019, we have accepted, um, we have received five bid proposals for the new playground um, to be built. So I just want to review those quickly with you. Tonight we received five bids uh, for, the, uh, for the playground. 
As you know, we had, going into this, we contracted with Human Nature, who is our landscape architect, who helped design the playground with input from the community, input from the trustees, input from our, the, uh, the group that we had gathered, feedback on social media, feedback from the displays in the, uh, in the atrium. So uh, what Human Nature did for us, they put together bid specs on what, what, um, on what the community wanted to decide what to build. It was a design intent bid, so we allowed people to, we allowed companies to bid with design intent, so it didn't have to follow the bid ex, uh, exactly, but we asked for the intent of the design to be followed, right? It's like you order Italian, you order pizza, you, you want pizza, it doesn't matter what you get, right? It's kind of the, the analogy that I'll use. So the, did I lose my screen? So the projector just went off, <laughs> uh, and so we are working on okay, getting that back Okay, so up. I will go by my notes. The, we there it is. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, the bids we received, they're in alphabetical order, break? so I'll just have it's Mr. Weckbach, I guess you're driving this evening. It's coming. Oh, it'll go. Okay, if you just want to flip through them. First one is from Dur Development out of Milford. The um, prices for construction are there, so the bid document we asked for, we asked them to divide, to divide it into two phases. Phase one, we're going to use funding that we've received from the um, the first grant that we have in hand that needs to be spent from the end of the year. Phase two is only going to be completed if they, if we get uh, the capital, state capital funding dollars. So when and if we get those, the uh, the contract will be awarded to cut loose on that part of the project too. What we're hoping is that the state comes through and awards that money so we can perform phase one and phase two uh, to the same time. But the design documents were constructed in such a phase, uh, such a matter that we would reuse and repurpose some of the items from phase one into phase two. So we weren't tearing things out and putting things back in. We were reusing when possible. So Dur Development, their total for their bid was $980,000. And you can see um, the components. So this is taken from their bid sheets. The components that they used, it's just a sampling. This was not their entire bid packet. Everybody's bid packet was very large. And let me say, everybody's bid packet was very impressive. The companies that bid on the project all have excellent portfolios, great references. Um, this was a very attractive uh, project to bid out. Um, next one, Logan Creek. Um, Logan Creek is out of Harrison. They uh, bid phase one, phase two, and their total for their package was $930,700, I can't even say my math today, I <laughs> lost my words. <laughs> Approximately 931,000. Yeah. So, and their phase one, phase two components are um, directly from the bid packet. Oberson's Nursery, they're out of Fairfield, Ohio. Uh, theirs is about 1.3 million for their total bid package. And let me, before we go on, the, the bids were um, sent out in such a way that we asked the bidding company to GC the project. So they are, they may have subs, and if they had subs, they, they, um, they let us know who their subs would be for like playground equipment install, surfacing install, uh, landscaping, that sort of thing. So uh, I wanted to make that clear. So it may look odd that a nursery is bidding on a project or a landscape company is bidding on the project. They're GCing the project. They're not, they don't design their own playground equipment. Um, the next one is playground equipment services. They are a Colerain Township company. They have a, um, they went a, a little bit different, so you can see what their, uh, some pictures from their bid were. They have, uh, their total bid was $899,000, almost $900,000. The, uh, one of our tasks was, you know, to, to analyze these bids was lowest and best bid. So I will say that Playground Equipment Services was the lowest bid. However, when we evaluated them in terms of design intent, there were several things in their design that were not part of the design intent package, including a, it's, it's a very cool design, I will say that, but they have a city, so you can see the police car, the fire engine, um, which wasn't part of the package because we were going for the fort theme. That was what the volunteers had said, the community had said they wanted the historic fort theme. So they had a lot of other elements in there that either weren't part of the bid specs or didn't go with the, the theme. So as part of our lowest and best uh, in the valuation, we um, have decided to go with Logan Creek 
uh, Logan Creek is out of Harrison. I think there's one more slide, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry, Pruse Construction. I forgot Pruse. Same thing, uh, $958,700. Um, but we decided to go with Logan Creek as the lowest in best bid. Um, they, they adhered to all of the design intent guidelines. They had a great price. We determined their, um, we evaluated their uh, references. I contacted three of the references who gave them great reviews on how easy they were to work with, all on local projects. So we have a... Jackie, there was one other piece that uh, I recall from the evaluation that was not included in um, the PES proposal, which was important, which was that ADA ramp that led up to um, the, the fort. One of the, yes. one of the things that we heard was that we, it's really important that this be accessible, that all the units, components be accessible to, to as large a swath of the community as possible. And that's one of the design intent features was to have that, that um, ramp up to the fort and that was not included and the so. ramp the ramp um was twofold the ramp was an ad accessible to the top part of the of the fort uh, that connected tower to tower and there were three towers in the original design to t intent their project um, had two towers in it um, the the ramp also served as a wall to enclose you so if you go if you go back to the first slide all the way back to the first slide you can see the overall feel of what it was the, the with the uh, the ramp is right there to enclose it. All of that synthetic surface is, tur is uh, turf, which is like astroturf. It had a longer lifespan than anything that we sp um, than anything else that we reviewed, so that's what we spec'd out. Um, PR PES included uh, a port-in-place surfacing, which is a rubber surfacing and turf mixture in theirs, um, and we didn't we didn't ask for port-in-place. So, again very nice playground it just didn't go with the theme of what we had uh, the landscape designer designed for us i have um, sample contracts to distribute you had an initial sample contract um, in your packets so this one's got a little bit more detail in it because we've been running a foot race trying to go back and forth between attorneys to get on the agenda before tonight because we're trying to um, solidify this so we can have a meeting get stuff going break ground and get something in it and use our, our are we under a funding uh yes. we need to get this started before a certain date yes we have to incur uh, we have to cover funds and certain things before the end of the year before our first grant and remind me what the first grant is nature works grant yes yeah. so we have to have that done before the end of the year we have to have that spent before the end of the year and so the motion that's before the board this evening is to authorize the administrator to sign the contract uh, to authorize the construction of the park playground. And the recommendation is to, um, is to approve that motion and uh, execute a contract with Logan Creek. Questions? Well, let's get it to the floor first. I will motion to authorize the township administrator to sign the contract to authorize construction of Coleraine Park playground with, with Lo Logan Creek. Logan Creek. I'll second been motioned and seconded is there any discussion um, it seems to me and this is before you were on the board Matt when we did this when Greg was still on the board we came up with the Fort Dunlap theme and the previous design a year and a half ago we scuttled the whole thing because we couldn't agree on the correct design. so the so the, the long and winding road of the Coleraine Park Playground replacement project has been um, uh, we had First, a set of conceptual uh, playground con like concepts, right? So one of them was, you know, uh, heroes in Coleraine. Another one was uh, asteroids destroy Coleraine. And another one was uh, something else. And um, when that, when we had those out in the in the rotunda, the feedback that we received from the from the community was, nope, that's not it. And so we uh, sat down and did some focus groups, and um, uh, and came to the conclusion that the uh, Fort Dunlop. Um, uh, concept was one that the community could get behind and so at that point we we dialed in and, and got all the construction documents put together for um, uh, for a Coleraine um, Fort Dunlop playground um, and then said <coughs> put that out to the world and said hey who'd like to bid on this this is the design intent you guys can alter it doesn't have to be pincher it doesn't have to be you know whatever these you come to us with your ideas but this is what we want and um, Four of the five said <coughs> gave us exactly what we wanted, and another got creative, and that's cool. But it wasn't exactly what what we were looking for. Um, so, 
Well, and that's that's part of the reason to our, our ever increasing population of park goers, why there's been a big empty spot over there at, at Colerain Park <coughs> over the last, because we didn't get started in 2019 because the three the three trustees at the time told you to go back to the drawing board and that, that has brought us all the way to the end of uh, September of 2020 and then everything that's come up this year. So, so uh, <coughs> I, I'm thinking that by the time you could get things rolling, if, if we approve this tonight, it's going to be a, a month before you can get it rolling and we're going to be up against deadlines to get this stuff ordered and purchased. Yes, Logan Creek knows that if you award the contract tonight, we have track shoes on and we're moving. So, so I have a really, <laughs> as a teacher, I say never a stupid question, but I have a stupid question. Um, I didn't see a key. What in the chart, what's the M, the D, and the P, the M, the D, and the P M mean? M meets, D does not meet, P partially meets. Partially, okay. All right, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Partially, perhaps. I yeah. sat there for 20 minutes tonight <laughs> trying to figure it out. And, okay. I got the same question to my hat. Oh, okay, so, great. Yeah, I was going to ask other two. So the... Um, yeah, the, the contract is pretty straightforward. Uh, phase one is awarded. Um, phase two is not awarded until we get state capital funds. Uh, Logan Creek has guaranteed their prices through um, first part of December on, on phase two. We're holding their prices firm until first part of December. So hopefully state capital funding has comes through before then. We also intend to use recycle dollars on this. We asked the, the vendors to spec recycled playground material, which they did, uh, at least four of the five did. Um, that way we can use recycle fund money on uh, some of the facade for the, the playground and possibly some of the surfacing because we use recycled rubber tires in it. So if the, so we've got the funding to start phase one upon yep. a, a, a majority approval of the project. Correct. So with phase two, let's say the state grant doesn't come through and the, the vendors and specifically Logan Creek, our prices were only good till 12 120 so the funding doesn't come through and phase one gets built and it's a year and a half from now and we somehow get funding to do phase two would that go back out to bid then i guess at that time i believe it would because the commodities will change prevailing wage will change all the numbers okay. will change the and phase one is constructed in such a way that it's still a standing playground it's still a workable playground it just doesn't have the wow of everything with phase one and phase two uh, but it's still going to be a very impressive playground Right, so we're voting on phase one tonight with the hope of phase two coming along. Yes, but well, right now it's all going to Logan Creek through the, unless state capital funding doesn't come through before the end of the year. So, yeah, let me make sure because yeah. Dan's question got me kind of confused. The vote today is for phase one and two Correct. Uh, pending, right. pending the, the, the capital. Phase one might be the only thing that gets built. Right. Right. It doesn't yes. commit us to spend funds that we don't have. So right. right now we do not have the state capital funds. This this contract doesn't commit us to to uh, spending that, um, but it allows us to lock in that price should you know the state of Ohio have a capital budget this year and include us. It locks in a price and a vendor because frankly it's easier to start a project and end a project with the same vendor than it is to switch vendors halfway in between. And and I've become um, slightly more um, optimistic. That the, that the state fund is coming. I have a call I need to return. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Um, I have a call I need to return about that. I think that uh, um, things are looking much better than, than I anticipated, but I'm negative and gloomy, so. <laughs> <laughs> you think, and, and you think that the Logan Creek follows the design intent, so the Absolutely. things we see in there are going to be... They took the bid specs as they were written for types of equipment, um, uh, types of surfacing, all of it, and they, that's what they spec'd out. Yes. Would, would this be constructed over the over the winter so that it was, I guess, once they get the job, they don't get paid until they complete it, so I guess they'll get started on it at some point. What's their... They would begin executing right away. Their contract states that they would uh, perform in 120 days. Which would meet the... We have to break ground by when? Well, we have to expend the funds by the end of the year. Yes. By, by December 31st. Correct. So we would order equipment. We would order supplies. We would, yes, we would get and that And depending all done. on the weather, they would get going on it or they, they've got the capability and the manpower to get this going. If you approve the contract tonight, approve, 
us, uh, Mr. Mills being able to sign the contract tonight. I intend to meet with them and Human Nature, who's our landscape architect, next week so we can get a construction schedule ready and get something going, get some golden shovels. And, and They completely understand that. Yes. So and they understand I'm just phase asking one you to make sure it gets yes. done because people have been waiting two years for this. And they understand phase one and phase two, that phase two is only executable if state, con uh, state um, capital funds come through. So they are fully aware of that as well. My concern on phase one, and it's something that's anecdotal I've just heard from every contractor I've spoken to in the last three months, is that they can't get material. I mean, you can't find two by fours that are straight right now. Um, so um, in terms of, and I know that they talked about the scope of their company um, and the financials were available, but they have a pretty big financial lever uh, in order to get, I, I mean, I, I'm concerned that they would come back and say, look, we can't get the material. Um, I don't anticipate that being a okay. problem with them. With everybody else, I've, all their references that I've spoken to, they have had no problems. And ours is an unusual construction project because most of our items are being manufactured. The um, the play surface or the um, the playscapes, the playground equipment's all being manufactured, and the um, the playground surfacing in phase one. If we don't get a roll in phase two right away, is um, engineered wood fiber. It right, and that's fall. the I guess that's more of my concern is because it's once removed. Now it's not in their hands. Um, who did you talk to? Um, I'm sorry for being so. Uh, uh, Ask your question. Yeah, um, I'm looking at their uh, references. Um, uh, am I allowed to ask you who they who you spoke to? Or? I talked to Sims Township. I talked to uh, Evendale, and I talked to Sharonville. Okay. All right. And they all gave them very good reviews, so they were very easy to work with. Communicated very well. And um, I, I know that this is Mr. Mr. Unger's thing, but I, I'm always concerned too about the maintenance. Uh, the materials that we have chosen for this are, are extending the maintenance as far as we can. Um, Yes, so we did not want to go, I will be honest, as a playground person, uh, mul I do not like mulch because mulch is difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. But right now it was the cheapest option to get phase one built and we can reuse it in the landscaping beds afterwards. Okay. So if we don't, if we, if we are able to cut loose phase two before we lay surfacing for phase one and surfacing is the last thing you put in, then we don't have to do mulch. We will go straight to the turf, which has the lowest long-term maintenance cost um, of any of the surfacing that we reviewed and there's multiple types of playground surfacing it wears the best it lasts the longest it's the maintenance is the least uh, with mulch the reason I don't like mulch is because kids like to kick it and throw it and then you um, you compromise your safety surfacing because it has to be at least six inches and fall zones are monitored and you have to rake it and you have to just be on it so okay all right thank you <clears throat> and um, it looks like Logan Creek do, do they not have an item in there for for drainage I don't recall oh um, in their in their itemized bid yes uh, yes I asked him about that it's tied in with one other one of their other line items okay so they'll perform the, the yes. drainage and that'll that's definitely delineated in the contract uh, I don't remember if it's delineated in the contract but it's still in I have it documented that they will do that okay because yeah, Bruce Bruce is missing an item on the safety surface and Oberson's has a blank and Oberson's has so, another blank yeah so you've because got some of that, those were rolled into other line right. items so they couldn't they right. couldn't and, pull that out and the way this sheets presented dirt development has a blank under safety surface but but all these items are included and yes. they're not going to come back and ask us hey I need a change order for no for that drainage. is a this is everything in our bid packet yeah okay yes and we I have confirmed that because yeah, I don't like change orders <laughs> so I just want to make sure that that so we're clear that that's covered so yes. um okay uh, Raj do you have any other questions sure, sure. I got a few questions yeah. okay <laughs> you're probably exhausted from the He's other questions up, up, no I'm yeah. fine I okay. like the way you snickered when you asked me it said that you had a few questions <laughs> <laughs> no no you, you're doing a great job um I just want to um number one um the the resolution mostly talks about phase one, phase two. Is it legal binding? So the guy is not, we're not happy, for example, we're not happy with the phase one, or then then we're not telling him you can't do the phase two. Is it legal binding the resolution because we're yeah, passing? inside the contract is the way you determine if they don't live up to the contract. If they don't live up to the contract, there are ways that they can be terminated. And it goes through the architect too, who on some level can represents the township and make sure everything is done properly and to our satisfaction. Yeah, there's an article 16. Okay, yeah. 
<clears throat> Other thing, don't you want to wait to see how he does the work, phase one, and based upon his work, if he, he made great job, we can continue with that with this guy. Or if you don't do a good job, all right, buddy, uh, you, you know we're not happy with the phase one. I don't know. We can give it to you, phase two. If we're not happy with phase one and we have reason to terminate that relationship, there, we are able to do that through the contract. Okay. If we wait to do phase two, what we're going to lose, if we try to do <coughs> phase two separately, we, there's two risks we take. One, prices are going to go up. Two, that we are not, if state capital funding comes through, let's say it comes through in a month, and they are not, you know, the, the surfacing isn't ready to go in yet, it comes through, we can switch on a dime and substitute out that, that engineered wood fiber for the playground surfacing that we're eventually going to put in. So it's a cost savings to us. And then we, um, and then when we do the grand opening of the playground, it's everything. It's a big wow. If we don't do that, if we bid it out in two separate pieces, they are going to perform all of the work on phase one. Two months later, after we go through this whole bid process again, we're going to come through. We're going to rip out the wood engineered wood fiber. We're going to put in playground surfacing. We're going to put in more pieces, and then then we're going to have the grand opening, which will delay the process again. So this is the most efficient way. This is going to be the best wow um, in the mo most the, it was designed in such a way that it was going to be best for the township. It was going to get done quicker and cheaper if we bid it out like this. Okay. Also, um, you mentioned about mulching and permanent turf. Um, I know the mulch is, you know, is, is you got to do it every year pretty much. Uh, it's a messy. Also, they give like a, a, a permanent turf or 15, 20 years warranty on that. I Yet it's more expensive. It's the longest warranty of any turfs. Yeah, it's but more it's expensive. expensive. Yep. But you know, you make looking. So what, what, what's the, your recommendation on that? Put mulch or the uh, permanent turf? I cannot, uh, the, no, final, the final layer, if the ca state capital funding comes through, is going to be the turf. So here, okay. here's, the, here's the problem. We can't put turf in right away because that will be the majority of our budget. We will have the turf and we'll have a couple play pieces and that's going to be it because the turf is so expensive. That's why we put it into phase two. Okay, so you you, you scrape off all the mulch and put a permanent turf. You know? Yes, because the mulch is also put into a surface. There's, there's yeah, a you got to sit in deep and, and all that. Yes. Okay. So we will be able to reuse the uh, human nature did a good job for us because they were very cost conscious with us, and mm. you know we had to make some horse trades on what we would give and take, and one of them was. You know, we need to sacrifice the, the turf in the first phase. Otherwise, it's going to be that's going to eat up the majority of the budget. Okay. So, uh, uh, Jackie, uh, you know, and also I saw that you, you touched a little bit based on that, and that the last one, uh, the bidder was the lowest bidder. Even the phase two is even extremely low, uh, like one hundred seventy-seven thousand. Well, so little letters, one hundred seventy-seven nine hundred and eleven dollars. That's phase two. Phase one, $890,707. So when you look at his phase two, his bid is so lower than any other the bidders, okay? Very low. So what did he, what, how come he can afford to give the phase two on the, such a low amount, low amount, and yet what was the intent? Was it different totally? I'm, I'm reading about f the numbers, you know, looking at the... F so who's, whose line were you looking at? You phase looking one, at phase Creeks? two total. Okay, phase one total. So the phase one total is a what, 177,911? Uh, the phase one total for... The, the PE's playground? Uh, the, the last bidder? I'm not sure how The lowest bidder? He did huh? offer a discount, so P that was, we wrote that into the bid that you can offer a discount, so you are providing service uh, gratis, you are discounting it at your own cost. So P PES did offer discounts in phase one and phase two, that's why they're very low in some of those, uh, on some okay. of those lines. So um, you mentioned about the intent, that it's not following the intent of the, the architect? Yes, and, and the architect followed the intent and the guidance that we gave them from the trustees and from the focus groups and from staff, yes. Okay, so his suggestion is what, it's, it's not away, away from our goal? It doesn't look like what we asked for. So we asked for like a picture and the other and four of the uh, contractors gave us that exact picture. They said, that's what you want, that's what we're gonna give you. And, and I think that uh, PES just was creative with it and they said, 
okay, we can come in cheaper, but it's not going to be exactly what you want. So maybe you would want to trade off thirty thousand dollars for for not what you want, and and that's that's the decision. Yeah. So to borrow an analogy that I heard earlier, we ordered pizza from a very nice Italian restaurant, and we get delicious spaghetti, but we didn't get what we ordered. Right. It's it's a great playground. It's just not it's not the playground we designed. Right, and that's why the, when Greg was still here the whole project got scuttled because we couldn't agree on a design and I think we went through a pretty long process to agree on a design. Yes, sir. For those that have been following this and that, that was before your time also. Yeah, right. um, and I believe Mr. Waller was here because I believe we had the discussion about history when he was here and <laughs> I have contacted the Historical Society and they've provided us content to put on signs so we intend to create recycled signs uh, for oh, I thought you meant history products. of this particular project no I'm pretty sure Greg was sitting in that chair that chair does something to people to make them crazy <laughs> <laughs> I was already there yeah. the um, yeah and there's a number of other things we want to do too that's not that we did not include in the bid we want to have you know we want to ha ask people to sponsor benches we want to get the schools to recycle cap bottle caps for benches and other d uh, different items throughout the park too. So, who will be our owner's rep through this project? Will that be you? I believe so, unless yep. somebody else wants to take it. No, I'm, I mean, I just <laughs> just to be clear, who yes. is the person that's going to report to the trustees the progress yes. the, that we're on budget and that it's getting done? Yes, the, and human is nature is going to help oversee it. So they're not going to GC the project, but they will continue to check in with the. And that's in their con. They understand that. Is that an extra that cost or last time? Um, Yes, it's already okay. been. So they, they are the experienced <coughs> professionals that Absolutely. are going to oversee this project, make sure what the, the selected vendor says he's going to do is done correctly and assume the liability for it. I don't know that. The, do they assume the liability for it? For the project getting complete, or is there a bond on this project? Or we're just not paying them until it's done? Uh, no, we'll pay them in phases. We won't okay. pay them. We don't prepay. So are, are they late? Are there late uh, demurrage or not yeah. demurrage? Um, we did not include late um, delivery late penalties. Yeah. Late delivery penalties. Yeah. Okay, Jackie. Um, uh, how much like uh, how many years warranty they give? Are they carry their own insurance uh, uh, liabilities insurance? Uh, goes with the playground equipment, and I will have to check that. I did not look in the specs, but it's Pensura playground equipment, so it's um, it comes with a playground manufacturer. And I, I would say that the, the that. vendor the vendor has their own liability insurance and part of yes. contracting with them is they provide a certificate of insurance naming yes, us that is in naming there. us as an additional insured. Mr. Solomon made sure it was in there. Okay. Yes. I, I uh, thank you for answering my thank questions. You. Did you guys have anything? No, else? thank you. Um, with no other discussion, Mr. Baker, would you please call for a vote? Mr. Rajgopal. I got a question, Scott. Uh, I know the one of the uh, the vendors. I can. I can stay, um, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, <coughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah um, uh, what do you say? Word? Are you I saying that you have a conflict? Uh, yeah, I got a conflict. So, so you, you would prefer to abstain? You can abstain. abstain. <laughs> That's what I got blocked it. out. Yeah. But, I, uh, okay, I can, okay. Uh, I'll abstain. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller. All right. Motion carries. Thank have, you, gentlemen. Have at it. <laughs> Ms. O'Connell, that was well presented. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Th Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Next item. Excellent. The, uh, the next item is an item from the Department of Planning and Zoning, and uh, Department Director Mr. Mike Aona will deliver this. Good evening, board members. Uh, the item uh, before you is a motion to authorize the township administrator to execute a contract with <laughs> OpenGov for permitting. <clears throat> zoning and code enforcement software so in an effort to allow the uh, planning and zoning department um, as well as our code enforcement officials uh, the staff uh, including uh, customers that uh, use all three service lines that we provide um, staff has researched a number of software um, companies that would allow us to have staff be able to do work uh, more remotely or, or um, and, and, and basically minimize um, interaction between customer and staff. Um, and we researched a number of software solutions. Um, OpenGov uh, really was the, the optimal solution out of everything we've selected. Um, in fact, we currently use them for a budgeting software and uh, they provide, uh, that's a technology we use to provide the dashboard reports 
um, that the department heads provide at the uh, first meeting, uh, the first board meeting of every month. Um, <clears throat> again, OpenGov was selected as the optimal solution. Um, it's a wonderful program. It's got an excellent um, front end for your customers to walk them through the permitting process so that they can apply for permits you know, outside of the office. Um, and then on the back end for staff, it's got a, a wonderful review process uh, that streamlines um, you know, the review and makes things more, not only more efficient, uh, but again, it, it will significantly reduce and minimize uh, that interaction between customer and staff, that in-person interaction. And in fact, it will boost the, the interaction that we'll be able to do and have um, you know, digitally. So um, the purchase would be made with CARES Act funds that would be appropriate at the sep uh, September 8th trustee meeting. And the total cost of the agreement is $29,540 uh, for year one. That's a setup cost and then the, the year one prorated cost. And then $20,000 a year for subsequent years. I think the current contract that's included in the staff packet uh, is, includes two years. Uh, so uh, the motion is, uh, again, to authorize the township administrator to execute this contract with OpenGov. And staff is recommending adoption of the motion. I would motion that we do such a thing. I second it. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? I would ask that year one we could pay for with CARES fund, CARES money. In year two, how would we fund it? Through through the planning budget. Planning budget. Through our through our it's that's a regular budget item with local funds. Yep. Okay, but year one we're able to get the twenty nine thousand yes. uh, as a CARES grant. Yes, sir. Okay. Was there any other discussion? Yeah, um, Mike, you do a great job on making it more transparency so that people can relate. I, uh, I, I called it totally the prime example. One of the uh, residents called, a, uh, told him, I say, go on online immediately. Uh, they have the reference number, they got it. And uh, I think the people start feeling uh, good about reporting any type of uh, the violation they see it. Uh, this will help more. Yes. This will help more and become more transparent. Yes. In in our in our operations. It'll be just as easy, if not better, for yeah. the customer yeah. Yeah. Uh, experience as well as on the back end for staff. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's, like it's, Matt <coughs> mentioned earlier, we might need additional staff. <laughs> Go for it, Matt. <laughs> and, and I uh, sense that there's an efficiency value added to this too. There is. Yeah. There is. Thank you. Was there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Rajagopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Ona. Okay, we have two items on the um, uh, admin side here this, this evening. The first one is a resolution authorizing the adoption of amended appropriations for year 2020. Uh, at your August 25th meeting, uh, the board approved a resolution adopting um, or authorizing the adoption of amended appropriations for year 2020. Since the adoption of that resolution, staff, staff has determined that updates are necessary for two of the funds, 2021, the gas tax uh, fund, and 2912, the community center fund. Public services had planned to purchase swap body beds and replace dump truck beds in the, two, in the 2020 budget. The department also planned to purchase an allotment of road salt before the end of the year. Those expenses were inadvertently removed from the appropriations. Resolution, this resolution restores those appropriations to the fund. In the community center fund, an increase in appropriations is necessary to accommodate the delivery of meals to senior citizens in lieu of the community meals hosted by, um, at the community center. So whereas we used to have congregate meals in our community center, now we're delivering them because of COVID. Uh, those expenses are reimbursed through a grant from Council on Aging. Uh, and so this is budget neutral, but we do need to appropriate the additional dollars, um, even though we will be getting the revenue uh, back on the other side. So uh, the recommendation is to adopt the resolution. I motion that we would adopt the amended appropriations for the year 2020. I second it. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? No. I, I think, um, Jeff, it's a great idea taking care of our senior citizens. Is a, you know, that's that's one of a good thing we're doing uh, for taking care of our community. Yes, sir. And, and I'm glad that you're doing it. Thank you. And I'll, you know, appreciate that. Yep. Thank you, Roger. Is there any other discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, Mr. Baker, please call for the vote. <coughs> Mr. Rajgopal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Wallace? Aye. 
Thank you, board. And uh, the next item is a first reading of a resolution to regulate and require the registration of massage establishments. And this was a item that was brought by uh, Trustee Waller. So do I, I need the motion to bring it to the floor to even though it's a first reading to discuss? All right, so uh, I'll motion to uh, uh, bring to the floor a resolution to regulate and require the registration of massage establishments. I'll second it. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? So this came up. Uh, a number of uh, citizens approached me about this, and one of my focus uh, has been fo focus focuses foci has been um, gross back in in, in in trying to kind of um, lift up the the businesses that we have in those areas, um, and without naming any particular establishments, it came to our attention that some of the massage establishments may not quite may be offering additional services. I don't know, um, but I did a little bit of research on that um, and. Uh, this is a way to kind of keep everybody in line. It's burdensome, I, I know, for those that are doing the right thing. Um, but I think that the problem with a couple of the establishments is so significant that, <clears throat> excuse me, so significant that, that we need to take action. Um, uh, it's not something I want in our community. Um, some of the things that are apparently going on there, and I think I probably just scratched the surface um, of, of some of the things I know I'm kind of vague on that but um, yeah <laughs> I'm vague so that I don't end up in court <laughs> I have a question for for Scott um, <clears throat> since this is the first reading we probably didn't need to motion and second it to bring it to the floor well I think just to go ahead and uh, have the have first reading discussion? yeah okay um, did you have any comments Raj uh, uh, I didn't even microphone know. Mike. Mike. I didn't even know the massage parlor. They're doing, but it, it does happen. We, we saw that last, was that a couple of years ago? Anderson Township, mm -hmm. the big ring. You know, it was going bad. I think Colerain Township won't be, a, should not be a place like this exist, should not exist. You know, the massage parlors, I don't know what, just go for therapy purpose not for the prostitution purpose. And that's a bad thing for our community to have a place like that. And um, uh, like I said, um, I spoke to you about this. I think um, the police department uh, will investigate this situation like this, maybe have a different type of enforcement strategy. Uh, we'll, you know, we look into it next time this motion, come, the resolution comes to the table will have a, a, a plan, a plan for this, how you, you're going to control this place. But on the other hand, um, townships should not regulate. I don't know, there is such a rules we can do, monitor, you know, regulate that business like that. Uh, we may, I may do the more research, or we may do the more research, how Anderson Township uh, rectified the problem. <coughs> so it, it, it is happening. And um, I'm glad that Matt brought it up. Uh, thing I didn't even know those things <laughs> is happening. And, and Mr. Barbieri, Barbieri uh, wrote a similar resolution for Union Township. Yeah. Um, and um, and that's yeah. I mean, it's bringing people from outside of the community that are here for you know for not good things. So um, uh, I think. Um, I will, I will ask Jeff Mills to more do the uh, study and come up with the, what is the department, uh, how are we going to enforce this, how the police can enforce this. You want us to look into law enforcement? Law enforcement it, aspect of it. And, and specifically how Anderson dealt with it. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, Matt also mentioned about Union Township. Uh, yeah, Larry wrote a similar, this for Union Township. Um, uh, um, I don't know, Scott, how long ago was that? Would you have been there? I knew I was involved in some uh, forfeitures that Union Township did about half a decade ago that involved a, a lo very large national ring. Um, but And I don't know if, if that was in place, but I know him and John Dieters, Larry and John Dieters, did extensive research and putting this together. And, and I've spoken to Corain Police Department. I've spoken to the state, um, to, to state representatives and to <clears throat> state law enforcement, too. Um, it's hard to catch folks in the act of it, but if you look at some of the um, 
um, the evaluations of the businesses, um, you find that there's a lot of noise out there that there's something else going on. In so order how to many uh, massage parlors we have in Colin Township? And be careful about naming any business. Oh, you know, I just I'm not. We're not naming them. How many? Uh, do you know it? Well, I think that any? there's two that fit this mold, but I think there's others that are therapeutic that are much different. So the two you're talking about, they, they're practicing this, uh, the prostitution. Uh, no, I'm not saying they're practicing it. I'm saying that that they're. Uh, Scott, maybe you should rephrase. No, they, this is just to make sure that everything does not devolve into that. We want to make sure that this this regulates the you know with the permitting and. And everyone, we're not saying that anyone's involved in this now. We just want to make sure that these steps will minimize the chances of that happening in our society and in, in, in Coring Township. The um, reference to Anderson and Union Township um, with resolutions similar to this, have they been challenged in court? Because I'm, I'm afraid if we do something like this, so no, this is actually not any particular business. <clears throat> the regulations that are put in place here are in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 503.440 to 503.50. So these these are allowable pursuant to statute. So our law enforcement people can um, enforce this with the state this statute. Is a, this, is a permitting, this is a permitting process. Yeah. It wouldn't involve the police at all. Yeah. And if there is these activities going on which is which is not known formally um, I think the first step for any of us that have knowledge of it is to, to file a police report oh yeah and I talked Taking to chief place. before the meeting tonight and he said we've had no police reports filed so I would say anybody in the community that has information on this to formally file a police report and, so I, and be I believe a lot of these they're also state regulated too if I'm not mistaken Right, and so that that's probably more the enforcement agency than than us. That's correct. So I, I mentioned this to Chief three months ago, and I, I mean, I, I don't know that that it would be pursuant to me to, to offer a report because I haven't witnessed it. But it's it seems to be something that's very difficult for for our police to get involved with because of um, because of the nature. Um, right, and there's other departments and other agencies that probably have better. And I've talked to the state too, and they've kicked it. Uh, yeah. Department of Liquor Control or whoever regulates the state. Now, I don't think any of these people have liquor licenses or anything. It's just a walk in, who knows what goes on there. It could be a, a therapeutic massage, for all I know. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, it, it takes a. Uh... Well, I think there's a lot. I, mean, I, I guess I'm not used to sitting back and waiting for it to, to sort itself out. I think that the people of Grossbeck, um, um, and, and I think that there's enough anecdotal evidence to suggest that we need to take a much closer eye as to what's going on and, and not to punt it to a different agency i guess is my point so I, I'm, I'm a lot more reactive uh, based on that and i you know and it has it has broader implications just based upon our location and things like that so so i guess um um yeah so i'll leave it at that yep, yeah, I'm, it, cer it, good. I'm certainly against th that type of activity <clears throat> i would think in this day and age though there, there's probably another thing to look at and that is um, people that en engage in the world's oldest profession probably get tied in together online and they go visit you at your home I, I don't know that I would set up a, a business on any street and thinking that you would get away with such a thing I would think that the another way this is being trafficked is is people just answering a, an ad on some website and going and visiting somebody so um, and you're right in not naming any particular business because if there's nothing going on, um, we could certainly, uh, we, we don't want to slander anything. And we, we love everyone in our business community and want them to run good, reputable uh, businesses. Um, the, um, are you aware, you mentioned that there may or may not be two. Are you aware of any other people coming along that would that would open up one of these um, places? I, no, I don't. No application? I don't know or I don't. I don't know either way. Well, and now that this would provide that way, they would have to obtain a permit. So then the township would be in the know. That's another thing that this, you know, just provides notice. <clears throat> and the existing ones would. And existing one, I think it's an annual permitting process. Um, we've got the right to rev revoke if it. if there's an issue. And, and there'd be a start date for this, like January 1st or something, or as long as it took to. 
I think so. And there, there's additional parts to this that I think that are very significant and that the people that are category, categorized as massage therapists or, or mas massage technicians, they have to provide an identification. They have to provide a state identification with an age. Um, and, and you can read in between the lines on that if you'd like, but um, you know, these are quote unquote Asian massage, um, Asian massage parlors and um, it, it's, you know, it, you go to their websites and, and for the for each of the massage parlors and you, you kind of look at it and think you have questions about age but it it gives us a documentation and it, it, it gets us in the room so that we can make sure that we can um look at what they're doing i i, I saw that uh ex explicit thing they're doing you know any type of illegal activities like that goes from the investigative work like the same thing stores have the liquor license they sell it to the miners. You know, the police do the sting operation. The investor, they send that young, you know, uh, underage people to see if they can buy that liquor. They arrest them. That's why the liquor uh, enforcement operates. You know, they they have a thing. It, the investigative work, sting operation, they call, you know. Uh, so this type of work, he has to have some, um, you know, operation like that. Uh, seeing operation will make sure it's real. Uh, you can't take it on hearsay. Oh, you know, yeah, I heard it. The people are doing it. And like a, a Dan mentioned about, we, sometimes we cannot, you know, invade on in the businesses by the hearsay unless we have the fact uh, from the you know, people from the law enforcement. Uh, so uh, that's better, like, a, let the Department Jeff will analyze the situations and make some uh, other, you know, uh, research on how other people went through this, how they they rectify the problem. Are you asking so <clears throat> for next time for me to come back with additional ways that other communities have have dealt with this in addition to the licensing right. process? Right. And I would I would say that if we issue permits for this, then we're kind of Yes, you can open up one of these here. Go, go get a permit. I, I, I have to really think if, if I want to formalize that, that you can open one of these and get a permit. My, my ask to you, Jeff, is to, is to uh, talk to our police and see if there's a way to in investigate any business, not just the ones that um, Trustee Wallard has mentioned, and, and see what type of activities is going on. I think one of the things in here about medical testing for employees <laughs> I don't know if we, that's even constitutional, is it? I mean, I'm not asking you to answer that, but. I won't. Okay, thank you, but I mean. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's it, like I said, Larry and John research this pretty extensively. I, I, sure. I have a, and a and, and then, statute. Jeff, do we have the, the I don't, you mentioned the far police department would be the ones enforcing this or not, or who on our staff or what department would enforce these? And that's kind of a open-ended question for you to come back with in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. Okay. So, um, and if anybody wants to see it, I guess, I guess this is on the, uh, you can go look on our agenda and read uh, what, what um, Matt's draft is that he, he brought forward and then, if this was to move forward, I would say that th th there should probably be some language about a start date and if somebody be grandfathered or mm -hmm. how that would all work. So um, was there any other discussion? So how would we close this discussion with, just leave it. since we opened and seconded, do we need to? No, I think that that's fine. I think you can, what you've, what you've done now, this discussion's over. Should, should I motion to end the discussion or? I don't think you need to, but if you, if you wish, you can. I'll just motion to table it to next meeting. Very good. And I'll, I'll second that. We'll put it on old business. It's been motioned and seconded the table. Is there any discussion on tabling it? Nope. Hearing none, uh, Jeff, please call for a vote on tabling the motion. Mr. Roger Paul? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Thanks. I think that's probably the best way. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a motion. I don't know if I should make it into two. Uh, I'll make it as one motion, and if there's uh, opposition to part of it, then I'll divide the question. But I'd like to motion. You amend the agenda first if you're going to put in the. Uh, uh, not for a motion, just for a resolution, right? I, I don't think you need to amend. The, <clears throat> okay. I don't think you need to amend the, the agenda, to add it. So you can make motions anytime you'd like. Right. So I, um, I, I'm going to motion to um, 
uh, have admin uh, administration look into um, um, uh, editing the editing the um, um, job description chart to include um, a part-time code enforcement officer to work the Colerain corridor and to include two, I guess we'll call them, I don't know, two cleanup maintenance specialists to also uh, work the uh, um, Colerain corridor at the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the public areas of that to begin to kind of uh, get this trash situation kind of focused and to use to to apply for recycle funds to pay for the uh, the aforementioned two um, a cleanup specialist. Are we can we discuss now or you got a so motion, motion was made, so it needs a second. Second it then discussion. Okay, uh, I'll second it so we get it open for discussion. So uh, Trustee Wallard has motioned and I have, have seconded to bring it to the floor for discussion. Okay. Okay, now, um, old art, I talked to, um, you know, Jason. Yes. Jason, Jim, is in charge of this division. Old art have, the, they had a contract with the cleaning crews, okay? And they, they, they do the highways. If you see that people picking up the trash on highways, you see that. Uh, I asked many times, it, since it's an old art, Colin is an old art uh, road, they can, they can, he, he told me they can send the contract people to clean up the, the, the Colerain Avenue, you know. So I wonder, Matt, we can talk to ODOT first. Uh, let me talk to Jason. So maybe uh, once a week they can send. What, what I'm trying to do, uh, township spending money, sure. which ODOT already have of people doing this. They already hired a people contract, and they're willing to do it, okay? So well, if you would like to, then I'll call Jason. I talked to him many times. He will do it. They will do it to clean up. And, and I want to understand you correctly. Or we had to hire somebody to clean up coal rain corridor. I I I think there would be value in having a, and it would be up to you to determine what we could afford to pay for. I think there would be value in hiring a couple people to send them out on whatever street or road in this township and go, wow, there's a big problem over on Galberth Road or, or on one of the subdivisions or somebody moved out and there's trash all over the place. Just somebody that, that you could send out as a hit squad to go, go take care of that problem today. In the right of way, in like right so Pippin way. has an issue and Compton has some issues and Galbraith could and Cheviot, so they could go on any of those roads, I guess. And pick up trash is that, right somewhere yeah, is, in the township yeah, inside the right of way and if we can if, if Raj has some some uh, communication where we can get an ODOT crew to help out on the state road which is which is Colerain Avenue that would be great too and but but there's other places that um, I know that the uh, to follow up on the, the cleanup on Galberth between Pippin and and uh, heading west towards uh, the library in St. Anne's Church the volunteer group that did some cleanup uh, the Hamilton County Engineer's Office did send somebody out there last week. I think I copied you on that email. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got down over the hillside, and um, it's been reported back to me that that was all cleaned up. I have not gone over and double, triple inspected it yet, but, but that was a good example of collaboration with the County Engineer's Office. And, and, you know, the three of us working together between maybe getting a couple folks in here to help clean up and Raj using his contacts and... I think we can make great progress. I think I commented at the last meeting, the first time I met you 20 years ago was when you were with the probation department as an employee, not as a customer. <laughs> but but um, when I called this, this man and, 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 and next day you had people out on 275 cleaning up. And that's the first time I ever talked to you and that was a long time yeah, ago. I, I remember that. But, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I, Dan, I also, um, I, I, I mentioned to you, I met with the Jody Lee. She's a, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of the community, uh, chief of community, uh, chief of community relations, and and she says she will also will help. Uh, any help we get, will make our bottom line is make Colton Township is better. I, you know, better. Yeah, I think this is an and, not an or situation. Um, I'm I'm for you know to use a basketball on that analogy. I'm for the full court press on it. Um, don't let the trash make it clear. This is kind of our 
you know, this is kind of our, our, uh, our stand against it. And we're going to throw whatever we can, whether it's volunteers, whether it's probationers, whether it's the, the state, uh, whether it's the, the groups that, that Mr. Unger works for, I, I don't care. I want to throw everything at it and just so that it becomes, because I think in the comprehensive plan next year, I think that we then need to new, need to move to mindsets, but I, I can't, we can't get movement of mindsets until we show people some results on the, on the ground, I feel. Okay, so just to make sure I understand, so the motion is to amend the org chart, and we'll also probably um, need to amend appropriations, right? right. Because, uh, and you would like me to look to see if, and I think we've confirmed that we can take the um, <clears throat> the litter folks from the recycle dollars. Um, we will probably need equipment also, because um, they will need to get to where they're going. So I, with the litter picker uppers, I saw, um, I saw gators, I've seen that gators have been used mm -hmm. to, de to deploy those individuals. Um, when it comes to the code enforcement person, that's probably a car, because uh, we are now at uh, three individuals and two cars. This would be four individuals and two cars. So in order to get them out, because that's where they need to be is in the field, probably need to get another vehicle. Um, fortunately, I think we may be able to use CARES Act, because what we're trying to do is not have people use the same equipment over and over. You know, we don't want multiple occupants in one vehicle. So uh, perhaps we could use a CARES Act to, to purchase some of these capital funds. But we will put together, what I'm hearing is put together, you know, how, how do we make this happen? Like do all the things it takes to make that happen. Is that right? You can come back at the next meeting with, I looked at this budget, we can do this. Yep. And I looked at this and we can't do that, but sure. here's what we can do. And okay. Is that kind of where you're heading? Yeah, yeah, let's get it moving. And, and you know, and for, for Raj, you know, if you can get a hold of those guys, we'll get them out too. And sure. I know that before COVID, I had Elder Day of Service. I had 40 or 50 juniors and seniors coming out here to clean up too. And then COVID hit. But uh, um, maybe we'll be out of the woods with that by the time the Day of Service comes in the spring. But it's, it's going to need to be a comprehensive solution, and it's going to be a, a full court press on it. And you might – in lieu of adding on and certainly investigate if we can afford to add on a, a couple employees just as sort of a, uh, a, a hit squad to go out and take care of litter problems but I, I don't think it would hurt to also talk to a couple outside vendors that okay. that do that type of work and when you come back to us in two weeks you can say hey we can hire these two employees for this um, I did find that there's another organization that does it this way and they hire this they hire their landscape company and they send guys out once a week and or whatever there's sure. whatever you come up with so that's my direction to you is to but but matt's right we do need to do something and it sounds like uh, collectively and i warned you you were working for the three-headed monster <laughs> um, it sounds like collectively we're getting somewhere with it yep. and uh, i know it's been a lot of talk in the last few meetings but um but uh why don't you come back to us in a couple weeks with with uh add a couple people or an outside vendor or something, but we do need to get somebody out regularly to police these areas and get the trash picked up. And the other thing we need is uh, all you folks that are out there throwing stuff out your windows, please stop. That's the, that's the biggest part of the problem. I've, that is, that is true. Clean up, so I, I see people coming out of one of the drive throughs at the fast food restaurant and they chuck their bag right out the window and, and uh, where'd you grow up at on, you know, you're not in Cleveland. You're in Coleraine Township. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, come on, folks. Quit throwing stuff out the windows. It's, it's not that hard to, 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 to find stuff. That I see this That was White. That was Sam White. Oh, Weiss. Weiss. yeah. My bad. He was, a, he was a great man. Yeah. Uh, may God rest his soul. The, um, the, but no, so that, that sounds like you're going to come back to us at the next meeting with, with a couple couple different ideas. Yeah. We do have to call a question and vote on it, however. Yeah. 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 Hey, Jeff, one more thing. Yeah. Um, uh, on that CARE money, we need to submit that uh, by October, right? October 30th, what other money we can... We need to encumber the funds. Uh, encumber by October... Spend? Encumber by the 15th of October and then spend by the end of uh, November. So... Or, I'm sorry, end of December. It, it's it's, it's a part of the cleaning, sanitation, the kind of... Was it, would it be eligible for this project? I don't yeah. think so. I think we may be able to, it depends on how, it, let me let me think about it. Let me figure yeah. out a way to, because that's a, 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 yeah. If we can, we will. Okay. So, be... so your, your motion is to direct the administration to come back to us with a couple different options at the next meeting? Sure. Kind of we, what this is yeah. To? Okay. That include, that include two part-time trash hit squad um, 
with the recycle the the, uh, the potential paying for recycle funds and one one um, code enforcement part time that those be included in the options and necessarily not limited to that but included That's yeah and then and then take a look at a talk to a couple vendors and see if some landscape company maybe even somebody in the township sure. would want to do that that way if we really get ahead of this thing and get the problem resolved you know we're not carrying two employees for the, the rest of their career so that way we've got another option sure so i think the goal is part-time right is that yes part-time yeah okay is it seasonal or year-round uh, i'd say year-round because people just don't stop throwing stuff out there and it really looks bad after the snow starts melting and all the stuff that got thrown out during the winter starts uh, materializing and you know the, the vegetation's not green and it's brown and that's when we really need folks out there so great um Great. Um, so it it's, was motion and seconded and discussed. Was there any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Baker, please call for a vote. Mr. Roger Paul? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Waller? Thank you, gentlemen. Aye. And Very good. Then, uh, Mr. Uh, Mills, the uh, next item uh, 11 there. That uh, concludes our new business, and we have no old business this evening, and we have no items on the consent agenda. So that would bring us to item 13, the fiscal office report. Mr. Baker. Thank you, board. Um, I want to give just a few details about um, public records requests. We, I mentioned several weeks ago um, that we had identified some old um, open public records requests going back to 2018. We suspected at that time that they were filled, they just hadn't been closed out uh, in CSR. And there's a, re a few reasons why that um, can happen duplicates usually is, is the reason. Um, a lot of these public records requests are duplicated and if the original request is met, um, oftentimes we found that some of the newer ones, even though they were filled, were not closed out. So we, we found quite a few of those were, were in there um, and they shouldn't have been. So just to give you some numbers, going back to um, April 1st of 2018, up till today, um, Coring Township has received 1,307 public records requests. Wow. What's that date range again? That is from April 1st, 2018 to today. Okay. Um, we have closed 1,214. So there are a total, and go even going back to 2018, 93 open requests. We still suspect that the majority of those uh, have been fulfilled, just not properly closed out in CSR. To, to come closer to uh, up to date, um, since April 1st of this year, uh, we have received 196 and we have fulfilled um, 265. And the reason that we've fulfilled more than we've received is because of those that have gone back to 2018, 2019. Um, so to, to give a little bit of perspective on that, and I hate to compare us to other areas, but it's kind of easy to do that when you have a neighbor like Green Township that is close to us, both to you geographically and, and uh, population wise. Um, year to date, Green Township for the entirety of 2020 has received 11 public records requests. A third of those, ironically enough, are from Coring Township residents. So just wanted to give a, an idea to everybody about the number that we receive and to, per, to, to try to even further put that in perspective, perspective of dollars. If you look at a 40 hour week, uh, one year is 2,080 hours. If you look at closing, 1,200 uh, public records requests in about a two-year span. And on average, you know, some of these take several hours, some take several minutes. So, but if you look at anywhere near an hour for a public record request to be filled, um, that is uh, my public school math at work, but that's about half a year of a full-time employee. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at the pay scales, I'm not sure totally what they are here, but regardless of how you look at it, that's a lot of money. 
So we're not only spending hours and hours fulfilling public records requests, which we do happily because it's part of the job. Um, but I just wanted to give some perspective as to the time that it takes. And now we're getting a, a sense of the amount of money that it takes. So having said that, we, uh, from April 1st to today, we only, we, we were down to 20, we received about six today. Um, well, I thought we were down to 18, but we received six today. So we're at 24 um, open public records requests. Um, and we filled 265. So I feel pretty, I feel pretty good about the state of public records request, even with these numbers that I just gave you in relation to our neighbors in, in Green Township. So that's all I have for tonight. You know, Jeff, I'd, I'd like to comment your, your comment that it's a, an employee for half a year. I, I don't think that's necessarily true because it got to the point where Glenna, who was working the front desk, we had to pull her off to help with so much of this. We actually, as you know, we created another part in the organizational chart just to have somebody here to answer the phone to serve the other 60,000 township residents. And, and that's a full-time position for Debbie. So I, I, I think you're underestimating what our cost is because we've hired a, a full-time person just to make up for all the time that in the office that we're spending on this. So it's actually more expensive than you're, than you're indicating. I, I don't for a second doubt that. And I, I think that the, the estimates are incredibly low, and especially when you look at the amount of time. Because quite honestly, very few times is there a public records request that only takes a few minutes. Um, usually there's department heads involved, there's redacting involved. And, and legal so, time. And exactly. Uh, legal time a lot, you know, quite, quite a bit. That, that's so money that, you know, the thing we were just talking about right before this, which is hiring a couple people to be a hit squad to go out and take care of litter and trash problems, that would more than pay for those people the amount of time that we're spending on public records requests, which is fine. You're allowed to make all the public records requests you want, and people do. But, um, and, and, uh, but that's all, you know, that's how we're allocating our funds. And I would rather spend it cleaning up the community or hiring another code enforcement officer or, or doing whatever. And that said, I think we have made huge progress in code enforcement the last couple of years with the people we've brought on and, um, and uh, words out that were on these things. And, um, I, and Raj, that's hats off to you too. The, uh, you know, when, when you and I started, the, and granted the, uh, the former trustees had to cut budget for a number of reasons, but, but, but I, and, and Matt's right here with us, and I, I think we've made huge progress. And, um, you know, thanks for getting all those public records requests answered, but it is an expensive, expensive thing that takes away from other things we could be doing with our limited resources. So, um, I didn't mean to jump in, but I had to comment and make sure you knew that, I know you know, but I wanted to point out to those at home, we have hired a full-time employee just to help man the office so that the other employee that used to do that can help out with these thousands of requests. So, um, thanks. You have okay, anything else? Thanks, yeah. uh, that's all I have. Um, and that, that would bring us to, um, I don't think we need another executive session, and that would bring us no. to an item called adjournment. I uh, motion for uh, adjournment. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, hearing, <coughs> hearing none, Mr. Baker, would you please call for a vote? Mr. Rajgabal? Aye. Mr. Unger? Aye. Mr. Wallet? Aye. This meeting of the Colerain Township Board of Trustees is adjourned at 9.56 p.m. on Tuesday, September 22, 2020.